Bashers, it's Friday night. It's time for classic Bashers. As you all know, Friday night is the night that I get together with Asheen. And it's also the night that I wait for people to show up because so many people are watching Who Needs a Drink? Uh, which I think it started an hour later today. I just realized that. Should I have scheduled this from 7 to 9? Maybe I should have. Anyway hi how are you all uh we start out slow we end up big obviously uh you can reach me at basherdirk at gmail.com for all of your beautiful photographs of your beloved of your cars your watches your everything's the things that make you go boom in the night uh you share it with me and i share it with the world please send it to basherdirk at gmail.com also on the ticker underneath is uh my incredible um and growing I got a new one yesterday. So I want to thank everybody for the Patreonage. Uh, it's really helping me out to stay away from uh, bartending or taking a job as a prostitute. And my Patreon pantheon is Jim Lassick, Sam Lid Consulting, Andrew Wolkowicz, Go Moto Soto, Nick Sisto, Complicated Time, Fergal McDermott, uh, Nathaniel Hannon, the incomparable Nathaniel Hannon, Dana O'Malley, Lord Scotty H. Dean McKenzie. Thank you all for that. So remember, basherdirk at gmail.com. That's how you reach me. I've got very few pictures. Generally, what I do is on Friday night, I will set up the uh, the pictures first because when a sheen pops in the door, um, we tend to go off on a tangent. I've had some coffee. I tried to change my lighting tonight. And now it's really weird because my camera is doing like autofocusing. And I have that one troll who watches the show every day. So I, sh I guess I should say thank you because he watches the show and he knows all the details of everything that we're doing here. And he just says like the dumbest shit. But, uh, you know, hey, a view is a view, right? As they say. How are you all? Let's see who's in the room. Let's see who's saying hello. Oh, the incomparable, ladies and gentlemen, Carolyn Martin, the lady with the wrench, the girl with the tools, $9.99. She gets the... She gets the super chat. Thank you so much for that. The incredible Carolyn Martin. Des Ferris, good to see you in the room. I guess everyone's not having a drink. I went out um, this, this afternoon. I, I went shopping i'm trying to figure out what to do with myself because during the day i have you know i'm alone all day long i have no company and um the girl's not with me anymore so i have to find things to do with my time and this has been rather um uh boring um sad not uninteresting um i watched a lot of music today uh, music hasn't really been my thing lately but some of it's lifting me up. I was listening to a lot of raspberries, a lot of Eric Carmen, because I love him. God rest his soul. He died. He left us right before Laverne did. Uh, what an amazing singer. What an amazing songwriter. I've been listening to the raspberries go all the way. Let's pretend overnight sensation. Uh, all those great ditties. Um, so today what I did is I went out and I bought, uh, because I ruined everybody's St. Patrick's Day. Look at that. It keeps doing that. And I wonder why it's doing that. It's like auto-focusing. Uh, my, my phone never did that before. Strange. Uh, so I went and I made soda bread, and I uh, made two of them, and one of them I wrapped in beautiful pink paper and some rustic -y rope with one of the cards for the beautiful ladies of Bon Vet who uh, so, so beautifully and so carefully and so, um, so respectfully um, put Laverne in a better place and took care of her before she went. So I brought them some soda bread and I brought them a, a big brick of Kerrygold butter because if you put anything but Kerrygold butter on soda bread, you're, you're an idiot. <laughs> Cause I don't want them to put break stones or any of the store American store brand uh, butters on the soda bread. So I made them a nice soda bread and I have one here for us. And, um, Hey, it's Friday, so I'd be happy to make soda bread for anybody. I, I think I could ship that anywhere, so 
maybe we'll talk about it at the end of the show if you want a soda bread. I make soda bread like, you know, they make it in Ireland. I make it the real way. I don't add any cuckoo crap to it. I do I do like it with raisins, though, and uh, like they do in the West, and they do uh, in, you know, I guess Irish Americans do, but they've also put caraway in there, which is gross. Uh, it's just flour, buttermilk, salt, and a bit of... Uh, baking soda and that's all that goes into it nothing else if you see recipes that have you know other ingredients that's not what goes into soda bread soda bread is extremely simple you make it with your hands you don't use a mixer you your hand is your claw you make it with that and it's it's really ready in five minutes i mean the batter and then you just put it in the oven and uh that's it uh, let's see who else Des is here. Uh, Angelo Minichello. Good evening, all. Dirk, I sent a pick and a topic suggestion. Did you? Let me have a look at that right now. Uh, me, myself, for a little fun. I thought, what do you think about Angelo? Oh, yeah. Well, that's that's always been the bane of my existence. Angelo brought up the idea of sizes on people's watches. I guess I'll wait for a sheen for the watch chat. Um, consider the size of the hole and the size proportions of a person's fingers. What are you thinking about? Uh, perhaps there's some sort of ratio. You know, that might be it. That's interesting. Is there a golden ratio? Yeah, it's called eyeball it. If you have like, boom, look at that. Look at that. One, one, six, four, zero, zero. It just, it's a 40 millimeter watch and it works perfectly. I mean, 39 works perfectly. I mean, 42 is the top end of where my 7.25 wrist can handle. I won't ever go above that because I don't want to look like Flava Flav on the wrist. I just think it looks ridiculous. But thank you, Angelo, for that. Nick Sisto, one of my Patreons, he says, good evening, all, and thank you so much. Another one, Angelo is as well. I got to say that. So Angelo is my latest. Thank you so much. Uh, Andrew Wokowicz. The uh, the homeboy of bastards, the ba the the bastard supreme. He's here. He's home. He wants to bash. Upvote and subscribe, please do that. We love you, Andrew. Let's give you something befitting of uh, a Patreon, a patriot, and uh, one of the coolest mfers I've ever known. Bang. You deserve the explosion, my dear friend. Uh, Jonas. Hi, Jonas. Hope you're doing okay. Have you listened to Dirty Loops? If so, what do you think? I don't know what Dirty Loops means. Uh, uh, for my edification, do, do expound upon the uh, theme. Dirty Loops. Is that a new group or is that a, a singer or what is that? Melly C is here. Good day, Dirk. I hope you're doing well. I'm doing as best as I possibly can. Um, yesterday I thought I was doing really better. And then Paul was like, I can't take this in my, what's the matter with you? Just you know, like, nothing's funny except was it you, Andrew? Andrew sent me a joke and I thought it was really funny. Can I repeat it? You don't mind, right? It was really, really funny. Let me go find that joke and I'll read it exactly as it was. I'm pretty sure it was you. Uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> Ready for this? What do you call a 16-year-old virgin in North Belfast? New in town. <laughs> that, Andrew, can I say, that really made me crack up. And, you know, I haven't had a laugh. I've tried to watch some comedy. I'm watching Palm Royale. Um, Kristen Wiig and uh, a cat, Ricky Martin is in it. And... Uh, Kaya Gerber, who, if you don't know who Kaya Gerber is, she is Cindy Crawford's daughter. And holy cow, is she one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen in my entire existence? Wow. First of all, she's eight feet tall, legs for eternity. But just, I mean, my God, what an absolute stunner. Um, Allison Janney, really, really campy, but not in a super gay way. It's like, um, 1960s Palm Beach money and this aspiring kind of hillbilly who who's, you know, like a social climber. And Kristen Wiig is, first of all, she looks gorgeous in it. And, you know, she always makes all the weird faces and stuff to contort herself. But she's actually a very beautiful lady and she looks great. And she's one of our most talented comedians. Uh, Carolyn Martin says, 14, whatever that island was, blue, I'm guessing, early on soda bread giveaway. <laughs> That's funny. Conair says, update on the Speedmaster auction. Sadly, I didn't win. Oh, fuck. I hate people who outbid Conair on Speedmasters. 
There'll be another one. And the one that comes your way will be the one that was meant for you. This, I promise. That was a great looking Speedy, though. I, I love those. Uh, Carolyn and I had a little conversation because she has one of those, too. She has the, uh, I think it was the 2315. She's got the, like a really great uh, date at three. They're beautiful. And, you know, there's, there are plenty. They're out there. Um, you know, I'm going to do, uh, send me that link again. And you know, I'm going to find you one cheap that you could buy. Cause I know where to find those. Cause I have a whole bunch of them that I'm, I'm looking to, I want a blue dial one, like a deep blue dial one dated three. Um, yeah, I want those. Uh, Andrew says, thanks. You're welcome. Andrew, you know, he says, go ahead with the joke. That was a uh, Ray Ray's joke was great. Um, Lord H is damn. Well, hey man, you know what? There's no such thing as late on Friday. Cause we go as long as we want. It's not a big deal. Jonas says it's a Swedish band. You have to listen to them. They're amazing. Okay. I will listen to them. Jonas says, Jonas said, what is the name of the band again? Jonas. Where did I put that? Uh, Dirty Loops, not to be confused with Dirty Looks, which was this band. Oh, man. My million years ago, I think I told you guys the story that I used to work at Atlantic Records when I was a kid. I had a, a like a intern job. It was, I was like 17. And, um, because my my dearest uh, friend Mimi was a publicist there, and she got me in there. And there was this woman there uh, who ran the Atlantic Metal Division because metal was so big, you know, Rat and Molly Crew, and you know all of that shit was going on. And they signed this band called Dirty Looks, and I thought that they were so shitty. And all the girls were wild for the singer whose name I don't remember, uh, but they were just such a crap, dirty, ugh, crappy, crappy. Scott Wexlin. Oh, geez. Dirk just found out about your poor Laverne. My deepest condolences. Been through it many times and it always sucks. Stay strong, man. Yeah, well, thank you. Um, I, you know, just, just didn't expect that to happen at all. You know, we threw so much at it trying to make it go away. Uh, I'll get to the bottom of it because, uh, because I want justice for Laverne. Um, like I said earlier at the top of the show, I'm really just trying to figure out how to reacclimate myself with my own apartment. Um, you know, like crazy things like working on the, on the countertops, you know, she's always up in my kazoo, you know, bedtime. She's always sleeping on top of me. Uh, just, you know, when you're so accustomed, it's behavioral. You, you don't know what to do with yourself. I just don't know what to do with myself. I just don't, uh, but I'm working on it. I'm gonna, I'm saying as strong as I can. Um, there is. You know, everybody's like, oh, you should get another kitty. You should adopt. I'm like, you know, it, not now. Too soon, my friends. I will definitely, that will definitely happen because I, I, I've never been without a pet in my life. But usually I've always had an overlap. This was the first time in my entire life that I, there, there wasn't somebody else in the house that could console me and take all my kisses and hugs. You know, and that's the other thing. You know, you you have all these, you know, you know, you you kiss her all day long and hug her and squeeze her and all that stuff, you know, it's just, uh, you know, where do you channel all that affection? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Vasilios P is here. He says, good evening to all. Good evening, Vasilios. Good to see you as well. And Dave F451. Um, do you think Ashin is going till seven o'clock tonight? I, I mean, he didn't tell me he was going to go on an hour late. Anyway, um, I just wanted to say uh, that for all the shit that's been going on with the royal family and all the speculation and all the horrible, intrusive, terrible people of the world who've been trying to plant gossip and uh, comment on their marriage and all this shit, turns out Kate Middleton has cancer and has been undergoing, she had surgery, she's been undergoing chemotherapy, and the whole world's been hounding her, and the world should be ashamed of itself. That poor girl... Uh, that beautiful woman is just, it's just absolutely horrible. And now she had to make a video to just tell people to shut the fuck up. And um, yeah. Scott Weckland says, my guy Jack's time is coming soon, I fear. Then I too will be alone in the house. But we all have to keep on keeping on, to quote Joe Dirt. Um, tell us more about Jack, Scott. Uh, is he your cat, your dog? Uh, how old is he? What's going on? 
Is there anybody around here? I've had a, I've had a geriatric dog. I've had geriatric cats. Laverne wasn't quite geriatric at 14, but I had a dog. She made it to 17, and um, she had problems walking, but uh, we found solutions around that. There was a miracle drug called Deramax. Uh, tell us all about it. You know, Share, 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 because this is a community of kindness where lots of people want to help, as you guys have all helped me. Dave says, get a parrot that will outlast you and your net. I would feel word of, worried about what happens to the said parrot, you know, because I know they live a really long time. Yeah. Uh, what do you do? Like when, like you die in the house and you're all alone, you know, say one of me, either me or Paul are dead. One of us goes first and then we have the parrot and then like the parrot say, who's going to take the parrot and who's going to, who's going to give that always worried about who would ever be able to take care of one of my pets the way I would take care of my pet. Of course, no one in my estimation. Um, yeah. Uh, send you pictures of my sister's hairy son. <laughs> that sounds perverse. <laughs> Let me see. I gotta take a look at this and see. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, what a baby. I'm going to do pictures. I'll do pictures in a minute because you know, we will do that at the top of the air. Can I ask she's an English rose. She sure is. Uh, what a beautiful, classy, elegant woman. Uh, fantastic. You know, they've been running her through the mill for quite a while, which I think is just disgraceful. And now look, you know, Scotty, Lord H says, Oh, started an hour late. They haven't changed time yet. Is that why it happened that way? I thought they changed. Yeah, they had to change. Didn't they change yet? Oh boy. Here's Scott. Jack is my almost 16 year old cat. Adopted him at two months, was diagnosed 18 months ago with hyperthyroidism. Meds twice a day if he gets it down, but has developed some dementia. Um, so hyperthyroidism, I haven't I uh, haven't had to deal with that, but of course I've read everything there is to know about that because at one point she got so thin we thought she had that and we didn't discern that she had uh, irritable bowel disease. Um Meds twice a day. If you get, that's the real thing. Is it in pill form or is it in a liquid form or a powder form? Because the pill thing, of, you know, cats don't hold grudges. So if you do the whole hold them by the jaw thing, put it all the way in the lower, the last third of their tongue and then do that and then give them a treat right after it, you're golden. It's the trickery. When you try to pull too many tricks on cats, they get hip to you and then they avoid you like the plague. Like for example, Laverne did not like potassium powder. And I, after a while, she just was like, no, I'm not doing this. The pill wasn't the problem. And I even have one of those pill shooters, which I've never used because it looks like you like something that you would kill somebody. Uh, yeah, it's terrible. Um, some dementia, uh, don't we all though? Uh, Sounds like it'd be. Send us pictures of beautiful Jack. Al Benedetti with the 199. He is my latest Patreon member. Be well, Dirk. Thank you so much. He's the latest. He just joined the fold. And thank you so much because I can't tell you how much I appreciate all that. Coming to you every day. It's my my thing, my passion now. Coming here every day and talking to you, finding out more about you. Enough about me. What about you? Uh uh, Andrew Wolkowicz says, uh, Andrew Jackson had a pet parrot that at Jackson's funeral was swearing at every member of Congress. They had to remove. Is that a true story? They should make a movie about that. Had to crush the pills up in his food. Otherwise, okay, here, I'm going to give you that. That often doesn't work, especially because when you crush pills, depending on what they are, they taste terrible. I first tried. She was on um, a steroid. So uh, I crushed it and she went, oh, my God, this is the worst taste in the whole wide world. So what I just did was I took the pill, I you you hold their jaw, you come in from like behind, you hold their jaw like this, you take the pill, and you put it like on the back of their tongue, and then you close it, and then you rub their right underneath their jaw. They swallow it, and it's done. And then you just immediately, you know, she's a cat. Uh, Scott, uh, Jack's a cat. So get that stuff called churus. Have you tried churus yet? I never had bought it until she needed to take medication. And holy crap, she started taking the pill with no problem because she knew right after that they're Pavlovian. She knew instantly that she was going to get the churus. And I got the shrimp uh, shrimp tuna flavor, which just sounds bleh. But cats love that kind of stuff. 
Some days he won't eat much hard to keep weight on him. Have they prescribed a steroid? Because a steroid will put weight on them and will really increase their appetite and thirst. Um, that's something you should probably talk to your veterinarian about because uh, Laverne had irritable bowel disease. I had put an extra pound on her, but we wanted her to eat more. So they gave her, gave us that. And we put a pound and a half on her. It really makes them hungry, 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 makes them very active. She was running around the house. Uh, and you know, it's, I mean, it's, you know, when they're that old, Hey, any kind of uh, like, you know what, when I'm old and dying, I'm going to try cocaine. Why not? I've never done it. I've never done any drugs. Why shouldn't I try it? Dave F F four fifty one. I wonder if the world's reaction would be the same if Kate looked like Quasimodo. Probably not. Um, you know, nobody talks about like where's Princess Beatrice, you know, or any of that stuff. Um, it's probably true. Uh, Scott says he tried that, found the pill on the floor later. Ooh, tried the churros. That didn't work either, but I mixed the pill powder and the juicy juice in his food. Oh, okay. All right, well, I guess every cat is different. Um, they all have such distinct personalities. Oh, I just realized if I bang the floor, it reverberates the microphone. Crazy. Let's do some shots. Let me get rid of my... Remember, basherdirk at gmail.com if you want to send some pictures... Uh, you send your pictures and I share with the world. That's how it goes. Let me get rid of that because we don't need that on the screen while we're looking at stuff. So let's start with, uh, oh, Angelo Minichillo, my latest, um, my latest Patreon. He sent us, is this Michelangelo? It is right. This is originally, I mean, look at this kind of sculpture. This is nuts. Let's get that. That has to be a, a, a copy of a Michelangelo, right? I mean, what an, has anybody ever been to Italy and seen um, at the Duomo in Florence? They have like all the unfinished Michelangelo works that he just was like, you know, doing them. And then he's like, ah, this is crap. And then he moved on. There's, I, I, I w openly wept. It was the most beautiful stuff I'd ever seen. And he thought it was garbage. That is absolutely stunning, man. Thank you for that. Angelo, Carl Dixon, he's got some pictures of his canine baby having a lounge. What are you drinking there, pal? Drinking, that looks like a flavored seltzer, like a lime seltzer. <laughs> Dogs do the darndest things, don't they? Oh, look at that. Oh, he's finding the sunshine because I mentioned that on the show the other day. What are those weird wormy things? on your house what are those centipedes are those some kind of leaves very is that a desert climate you're in a desert climate look at this beautiful baby it's basking in the sunshine as they do so great so great thank you for that we love to look at the kids carl that's carl dixon um Oh, Angelo Mankell. Oh, <laughs> let's see what this is. Oh, somebody sent me this the other day. This is really funny. <laughs> this is so true, though. Uh, I just saw mashed potatoes referred to as Irish guacamole, and I am done. <laughs> I'm very funny about mashed potatoes because, you know, listen, uh, as an Irish person, we take our potatoes very seriously. And very oftentimes you'll go to a restaurant and they'll cream them or they'll just add cuckoo, cuckoo stuff to the recipe. And here's how you make mashed potatoes. First of all, you get big spuds, big, beautiful, russety spuds. You peel them beautifully, you soak them in water, and then you boil them. I chop them up. I chop them in half or in quarters so they boil faster. And then when they're perfectly cooked, which is, you know, I don't know, it depends on the, the amount of potatoes, just so you can stick a fork in them and they get very... Um, you know, they, they start to fall apart. You don't want to overcook them either because then they get too light. So then you drain them. And then I let them, I put the, the, the uh, uh, towel over the pot for about five minutes just to steep them in their own steam. Take it off. And then I just take about a half a pound of butter, uh, salt and pepper, and I just start mashing them until they're perfectly, so you could make uh, like a devil's tower or a volcano out of them. I don't like the smooth ones that you would put in like an icing confectioner's gun. Uh, you go to a restaurant and they have like creamed mash or garlic. I don't want any of that. I just want mashed potatoes, bit of scallion on the top, 
butter. I do. I don't mind the sour cream thing because the baked potato with sour cream and butter and scallions is green onions is just mesmerizingly delicious. But that's funny. We're funny about our potatoes. We really are. We're very funny about them. Thank you for that. Uh, Ray, Ray. Oh, look at that. He's watching the Sheen O'Malley. He's got a pack of smokes. He's got his Jaws wallet. He's got his rolling papers. He's got a bottle of some brute champagne. And is that a Rolex Pepsi on there? Holy shimoli. Or is that a, is that a, is that, a, oh, it's Tudor. What, what do you got there? You got the, the diet Pepsi and uh, you've got an HP computer and you have a Sheen O'Malley on top of the entertainment center. A little bit of, uh, of um, Salvador Dali right there. Do you have a DVD player? How interesting. I have one of those um, PlayStations, PlayStations uh, that has a DVD player in it. And I just recently, I don't know what I did with it just now because I, I spilled Diet Coke on my desk and I right before the show, I had to scramble. I bought a, a DVD player for my computer because I realized I didn't have one. And I have a 5K screen on this thing, even though she's on her way out. So you got the man, Mr. O'Malley, on the screen. And thank you for that. Uh, what is he going on about today? I didn't know because I was baking, so I didn't have a chance to look. Um, I'm going to just read a couple of messages too. JV Foam says, hey, Dirk, thank you for featuring my Aquaterra Saffron and Longines pictures on your show and your kind words. My lady, my beloved Bene Gesserit witch. Oh, look at that was pleasantly surprised when I replayed the snippet and she sends you a big hug from across the great pond. Well, thank you so much. Well, you know, listen, when you have incredible taste in watches and women, I want to let the world know all about it. So thank you for that. As he is Martin Gunther, let's share the screen so we can have a look at what he sent us. Okay. So what do we have? I have no idea what this is, but this is very, very cool. What is that? A what do you, oh, is this some kind of Russian-y action? It looks like it belongs on a submarine. Not a submariner, but doesn't it look like some kind of Jules Verne timepiece? Very cool. What size is that? Do you just have the big? you just Paul Bunyan? You have the biggest... Oh, wow! Looky there! How cool is that? How come more watches don't do that? That is super-duper sexy, man. I have to say... That is cool. Wow. In the in the if you're he here, send us some information on those watches. Like where where are they from? Where do you get them? Oh, wait a second. There was another one. I missed it. Oh, geez. I missed it. And could you believe it? Of all people, I missed Martin Gutierrez Speedmaster. Look at that. He's got a speedy reduced on his wrist, just like mine, on a really attractive leather strap. Now I now I know the size of the watch. You have a big wrist. That's a 42 watch. You could wear a 46. You could wear a Panerai. You could be a Panaristi. Panaristo. You could join the Panaristi and be a Panaristo. Look at that. Isn't that one of the most... Listen, man. Look at that dial. You know, I love how on my speedy... Where's my... Where's my... Here's my speedy reduced... Um. I just love how the subdials are so far out. Kind of gives it a really interesting look. It's such such a legible watch. Such a one of the most legible watches in the world. The loom on mine is pretty close to dead. And you know what I was thinking? Uh, I was thinking, Dirk, I'm going to take it and I'm going to go have the big uh, Omega treatment done on it. Because why not? I'm never going to get rid of it. it. I don't care if it's what's original. I mean, I'm going to have them reloom it. And uh, there's a, I have a couple of little things going on there. I'm just going to go in there and have them do it. Because it's to watch. I'm going to wear that for the rest of my life. And that's that. Here's the pictures that Vasilio sent us of his sister's hairy friend, hairy son. What an adorable thing. Look at you, baby. Oh, my God. Could you be cuter? Look at it. It's a monster party. Oh, my God. Look at you. Is that his playpen in the back? Oh, Jesus Christ. Look, he's are. <laughs> Look at the face on you. Oh, my God. Look at that big. Oh, my God. It's like a monster. Holy crap. That must be scary. Oh, is that a girl? No, it's a son, right? You said son. So oh, that guy's gay. We know that. Stay away from him, you masher, you. 
terrible beast. Um, thank you, Vasilius. Oh, look at this baby. This is beautiful. The white cat, I always had black and white cats, and Laverne was my white and gray cat lady. Look at this. Look at this beautiful. So these are red markings. Laverne had gray markings, but they're very similar. Very similar with the white blaze and the and the on the tabby tail and the, and the spots. Laverne had spots only on one side of her. Oh, what a beautiful baby! Did you give me the name of that cat? Let's see. Got to just turn it off so I don't share anybody's info. Uh, that was. Oh, that's Jack. Oh wow! More. Let's have more Jack. Oh wow, man. Jack is beautiful. Look at that. Look at that. You beauty. Is there more? Are there more pictures? Is there more Jack? We want more Jack. Oh, chilling out. What a beautiful. God bless, man. Very similar. Just the, where the brownish reddish is. Laverne had uh, had um gray this is very interesting <laughs> should i get this watch considering i'm the lead singer of hitman <laughs> um this is a wise hitman look at this automatic 200 we spell it with two t's like bernie hitman he's the druggist uh listen uh you need some uh some uh calcazone for your kelch the voink you gotta go see bernie hitman down at the pharmacy he's gonna he'll do you right um it's so funny whenever we, you know, in the early days, people used to say, is it Hitman or the the Hitman? Everybody loves to say the Hitman. I'm like, no, it's just Hitman. We just put two T's in it because we thought that looked cool. I like this. It's like a, it's like a Incredible Hulk, but it's a Hitman. It looks great on your wrist. Perfect size. I'm assuming that's the same dimensions because that, man, that certainly looks like an oyster style bracelet now, doesn't it? Doesn't it look like an oyster bracelet? does fantastic is there two pictures here oh look at that this is a very attractive watch man i have to say look at this beautiful thing wise hitman i i am considering is it expensive i gotta look i gotta look i gotta look gotta look great looking i will look that up thank you for that uh oh that's from al al that's what you have you are so full of content tonight, my friend. Uh, Dave F451 says, it's a little late, but sent your picture. There's no late. There's no late. Um, that Those are great. Andrew with cats. Let's see what you sent us. Oh, pretty cats. Wild cats. What a beautiful baby that is. Wow. I used to be, I told you guys, did I ever tell you I was really allergic to cats? And then I got one. And then I suffered for three months. And then I was no longer, I immunized myself. Oh, look at that big chubby tuxedo. Tuxedos are the smartest. You have to be careful with tuxedos because, man, they can get into anything. And they if they had thumbs, uh, they would probably rule the world. I truly believe that. Because if cats ruled the world, the tuxedos would definitely own it. That's, there's no doubt about it. <laughs> it's a joke. Let's see what this says, Andrew, because you're just such a funny, funny bastard. <laughs> Cats after inventing lonely single women. <laughs> they could invent that if they tried, I'm sure. Uh, Dave, did you send me a picture? Uh, you know what? You know, Dave at 451, to be fair, I don't know what your real name is. Did you send it to uh basher dirk at gmail.com did you send it to this email because that's where you need to send it i don't even boot up my other mail anymore uh did you send it send me a message because i am that uh, that is the top that is the last email i have for tonight uh so tell me if you sent the picture because i don't have it now let's go back to where we were and the connections. Crush it up the food. Uh, Quasimodo. You found the film floor. Um, and, oh, wow. It was by Strozzi in the 1800s. How interesting. 
Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Andrew, talking about the uh, mashed potatoes, I add sour cream when I mash potatoes. Yeah, you could do that. I just don't want my potatoes to ever get uh, um, thin and liquidy. I don't want them to have, I want them to be fluffy. I want them to have, I, I just, the creamed ones, I just never enjoy those. And maybe it's just because the way I was brought up. Scott says, I like the strap on that one. And I'm not much of a strap guy. I am a bracelet guy too, but I do have a couple of strap options. I would like to be more of a strap guy, especially speed masters or strap monsters. So I would definitely like that for sure. Uh, Mart Martin Gunther says that weird Eastern watch is for blind people. And it's from Belarus. How cool is that? Wow. It's from Belarus. Belarus, which has got like keeping all of Putin's nuclear weapons at the ready right at this moment. He also says the reduced is 39, 39.7. Uh, that's what I got right here. What did I do with it? I put it down, right? Did I put it back in the box? I did. Yeah. Yeah. I'll put it on. I'll put them both on. So you see what they both look like. Yeah. You know, not that big a difference at all, really. You know, uh, it's funny. My I'm left-handed, so I wear my watch on my right hand. I know that that drives the sheen crazy, but you know what can I tell you? I'm left-handed. Uh, it's just the way it works. Um, my left hand, when I put watches on, my my left wrist is way way thicker. It's like seven and a half inches because yeah, it won't even fit on there, and it looks a little looks a little small. Um, it's because I'm left-handed, so I do the bulk of my work with my left hand. So. Obviously, I've built up my left wrist to a degree where it's just a little bit more cuckoo. Okay, yeah, let's talk about let's talk about this because I got an email from from the Topster today. He's got let's go let's go get that watch and we'll pick it out, right? I'm gonna pick it up. Let's talk. Let's talk about it. Let me get it in a tab. I'm gonna say Rolex G Y. Uh, GMT. Let's have a look at that. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah. Images. Images, Google. Let's see the images. There it is. Let's have a look there. Ooh, it's 22,000 there. Okay. So let's, let's, let's present Tobster's case. Tobster has a case. We need to discuss it. Uh, okay. Here it is. So. There it is. Let me blow it up so everybody can see it better. I love this watch. It's fucking mental. So Rolex is AD offered him a GMT Guinness, but it's tax time really. And, he, you know, you got to deal with the finances. Uh, but I can't decide. It's 18 grand with tax. If you look on that thing, I see everywhere else. I see it for 22. So it's 18 grand all in. Oh, I would just say, fuck it. I'm going to put that against my tax return because you're not going to get that call very often. And I think that that might be the most interesting uh, GMT out there currently. Because look, listen, Coke's coming back. Maybe, um, you know, the Pepsi is just unobtainium. Uh, unless you pay through the nose, of course you can get root beers. You can get, if you pay a lot of money, this is also a two tone piece though. And that's two tone. You got gold right there. You got a gold crown. You got gold center links. Um, is that a gold bezel? Is that bezel? The outer bezel is gold, right? On this thing. God, that's crazy. This watch is beautiful. I can't make the choice for you, but, um, I think that you should. I think you should do it. I say do it because, you know, and how often do you get that? You know, how often do you get it? Andrew said he sent a couple of pictures. Well, we'll go. We can go do it now. Scott says he's a good kid. He looks like a beautiful kitty. And and it's, you know, like in their older age, you want to you want to pamper them as much as you can. And uh, they deserve it. I tell you something, you know, when, right after Laverne got her um, blood transfusion, which was kind of a big thing. But, you know, they do it in an hour. Um, man, you wouldn't believe how great they feel after that. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Topster, uh, buy it. If I were offered that wood in a heartbeat, we're waiting on a root beer. If the ADA, maybe this, this is a piece that no, I've never seen one in the wild ever. Tobe, never, never, never. 
Tobes just says, uh, I'm really thinking I should. He told me to call him tomorrow and give him an answer. It's a stunner on the wrist. It sure is. Al Benedetti says, the Y statement is three or 400. Incredible fit and finish for the price. From Thailand. How interesting. Uh, I wonder what is inside. Do you have any idea? Is it like a, a Salida? What do they have in there? Topes says, my brother-in-law has the root beer, and I think the Guinness is nicer. I, I'm leaning towards that too because it's just so interesting, you know? It's just so interesting. Um, Ray Ray says, torn between two lovers, just another fella going on a bit, that Yorkie slut. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Ray Ray. Um, but yeah, Tobster McDonkey Scott says, uh, Guinness is a stunner. You're going to buy it tomorrow. I know. Just do it. You know what? What are you going to do? You can flip it. If you if like the money gets crazy, you can, you can make money tomorrow. If you wanted to do it, you're not a flipper. People who flip once in a while, like, you, you know, for financial reasons, shouldn't feel bad about flipping because they're not flippers. It's not flipping if you buy a watch and then have second thoughts and need to get rid of it. And if you make a couple of dollars, well, then smart investment. You could be like Trump. I don't pay taxes. That makes me smart. Mark Gerard is Googling it now. Why is my right wrist thicker than my left? Because you do more menial labor with your right hand. That's just the way it is. Everyone's saying that you should buy a taupe. You know, Mark Wilde is here and he says, working late. I'll watch again tomorrow. But you sent me and you sent me. Oh, Boris's birthday. Let me get to that right now. Oh, Al Benedetti says it's got a Seiko NH31. From what I, well, that's nice, too. Ray Ray, haha, ha, sorted you on the laptop on me. Lap, big fella on the big TV. Indeed, 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 it is. Let's go. Uh, I got a couple of new pictures. Let's see what these are. Uh, that was the last one you sent me was, I sent them. I did them already. Let's look at Mark Wilde's beautiful Boris. Let's get into that. Oh, I just lost the screen. Boris. It's his birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Boris. Happy birthday to you. Boom, boom. Happy birthday to you, Boris. It's amazing. What birthday is it? Which birthday is it? It's like 18, right? Didn't you say it was like 18? Uh, Melly C got some shot. Oh, here's some. I love Melly C. Always sends me lots of great Snoopy stuff. You are quite the Snoopy collector. Look at that. I love that. The Timex did some great shit. There's, of course, Snoopy as the Red Baron and uh, a just a Rolex Explorer on its side in front of a vase. Uh, and then look at these two sleepy bastards. Is there anything cuter than cats when they're sleeping? Oh man. It's amazing. They're beautiful. What beautiful babies. Oh, boy. I miss her. It's weird. Oh, here's Andrew sending me some new pictures. Oh, more, more cat pictures. This is great. Window. Look at this. What a, what a lion, huh? What an expressive puss on this guy. What a big baby. What a big, beautiful baby, huh? Incredible. Oh. What is this cat's name? I need to know. Oh, look at this fat guy. I love when they're chubby like that and upside down. Upside down is the cutest thing ever. What is that? Oh, it's a video. Did you send me a video? Well, that didn't work. That didn't work. Beautiful expression, indeed. Uh, Tobes just says, I don't flip watches. I think the grade dealers will pay around retail if I... No, they wouldn't. <laughs> oh, the grade dealers. Don't sell... To, don't flip to them. Don't flip to them. Sell it. Sell it privately. That's where you make the money. Don't give those guys anything because they'll rip you off because that's what they do. Gray, gray market dealers want to make the most amount of money. And that is not out there in the wild. If we went on... Um, I'm going to show you a place I go. Why don't I just show you where I go? Uh, I'm going to show you a place. I know a place. 
Let's see if they have it. This is a place on Long Island that is several different, um, several different uh, locations, but uh, it's called Collectors 1946. And my, I haven't bought anything there, but my father-in-law has it. I and I probably will. He says it's like the, you know, not the greatest looking place, but they do have beautiful stuff there. So I'll go to watches. I'll go to Rolex. Uh, sorry, let me go back. Let me go back to watches and I'll go to GMT Master 2. Let's see what he's got. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. All right. I don't see that. See? Nobody has that. Nobody has the Guinness. Look at those. Oh, God. Oof. I love the old old Pepsis. See, he's got he's got a root beer. He's got Batman's root beer. Look at twenty grand for two thousand eight GMT Master Two. That's a kind of pricey, I think. Uh, okay. Uh oh, left hand drive. <laughs> Look at this. Look, you know. <laughs> This watch is kind of stupid, but, you know, what do you think? What do you guys think of that? <laughs> I don't hate it. I know it's kind of, oh, it's got diamonds on the, oh, no, I didn't see the diamonds on the case. It's only $11,000. Uh, wow. Isn't that stupid looking? Yeah. No, thanks. Pass. Hard pass. Uh, let's see if we see anything in any kind of. Let's see. There's another lefty. There's a third lefty. Nope. I don't see anything like that. Oh, uh, solid gold, 18 carat yellow gold, green dial for 43 grand. Um, this is a place in Long Island. They have like four locations. Collectors 1946. Uh, if you're in the New York area, or if you see anything on you like there and you need me to go get something, well, I'll do it. I'll go for you. I'd do whatever you guys want. It's because they've got deals here, like really good deals here. Yellow gold, GMT. A lot of Pepsis, man. They're like Pepsiville. Got to say, I kind of dig this. Huh? 12 grand for uh, look at that champagne. Look at that. The Champagne Certi. I don't hate this. And I'm not a gold person. I kind of think that that is sexy. What do you guys think of that? I kind of like it. That's just me, though. Come on. Uh, yeah, they see, they don't have one. They don't have a Guinness. They don't have a Guinness. But they got to listen. This is all the watches they have. They have everything there. You name Rolex cereal. Look up. They have Sky Dwellers. They have, ooh, what do they have for milk houses? Sometimes they have like the really old ones, like a lot of white dials. Ooh, white dials are cheap, 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 cheap. Wow. These kind of went down. Huh? They were they were up there for a minute. I like the white dial. Z Blue 10, Z Blue 12, Z Blue 12, Z Blue 10. Here's mine, but for. Eight. Wow, that's cheap. I saw it for 15. Wow, it must have gone down. I'll have to go check what they're saying on um on the uh, Chrono 24, you know. Um my port wrist is smaller than my starboard wrist. Go figure. <laughs> you shippy. Uh the long hair is senior. He's 28. 28, right, the tuxedo's olive tuxedo. Yeah, Andrew has a 28-year-old cat. Fuck. That was double Laverne's age. God bless you, Andrew. Nino with the 499 Super Chat. Thank you so much. Thank you for the Super Chat. Let's give you the big gong. That's what that sounds like to me. Uh, uh, you know about the ship, right? I've told you that, Ray Ray. I've mentioned it a million times that Paul is the uh, executive uh, 
New York chair for the SS United States Conservancy, the largest passenger ship ever built by the United States of America, the fastest ship ever to cross the Atlantic, blue ribbon in both directions. And they technically, the SS United States Conservancy owns her. We're looking for a new place because we have a partner to build her out and turn her into a museum and a hotel and an esplanade and restaurants and repurpose her for history for for forever. Uh, because she should should have been picked up by uh, she was co-financed by the United States government, convertible into a troop ship within 24 hours and a beautiful, beautiful, uh, beautiful ship. Um, if you ever come to town and you ever want to go on her, uh, I can make that happen for you. The video is them grooming each other. It wouldn't let me play the video because it's probably not in the format that this stupid thing recognizes. Andrew Scott says they're gorgeous kitties, great companions. Yeah. My dog and my cat were best friends. Uh, and when my dog went, my cat went right after her because it couldn't take it. The Snoopy addict is real. <laughs> yeah, that's great, though. That's really great that you, you love the Snoopies so much that you collect them. That's great. Uh, Nino says, just checking in while my kids are eating. They'll be in to attack me in a few minutes, and I'll watch the rest later. Well, thanks, Nino. Uh, that's a great-looking movement you got going on over there. That looks like uh, some form of the original La Mania iteration that made its way into the uh, the Omega system in the 321, 861, 1861. Looks like that's where it got its origins uh give you a clue me anchor shiver me timbers uh carolyn martin says i own that yes you do own that she's got a very uh you should do a state of the collection you know that that would be cool everybody be into carolyn martin state of the collection what do you think guys thanks god takes turns watching me sleep at night oh boy cats watch you sleep <laughs> Uh, what did I pass? You passed it. There was one on the first page. Did, is that right? Okay. Hold on. Let me go back. Let me go back. On the first page, you said there was a Guinness there. Going back to the first page. Was there a Guinness? Is that black? No, that's black. That's the espresso. I don't see it. Maybe the second pitch. What are you talking about, Willis? I don't see it. I don't see it. Did you see a Topster or am I crazy? I'm looking for a two-tone Guinness, and I don't see it. I don't see it anywhere, but Mark Wild, Wild, Wild! Total respect for your resilience. Man, I'm a mess. Like right after last night's show, I just went to bed. So I don't know about that. I don't know how resilient I am. Right there above the lefty. Okay, hold on a second. Let's go back. Right there above the lefty. Oh, shit. Didn't even... Holy crap. There it is. $19,992.13. Okay, well, how did I miss that? Uh, well, you're still making out like a bandit, and this is used, and yours has got yours is brandy new. Look at that, though. Let's look. Let's look at this thing. Let's have a look. Oh, I don't know how you could turn this down, man. Look at the build on this fucker. Oof, man, Tobe, Tobe, Tobe. Oh my God. I mean. I mean, oh no. Oh, look at the new card. Oh, Jesus Christ. Is that sexier than F? 
Wow. Oh, shit. Nino is the hairy Italian. Hey. <laughs> All right. That's your YouTube name. Now I know who you are. That's so funny. I didn't know that that was you. See, that's Tony. Hey, Tony. Uh, everyone's very uh, favorite hairy Sicilian. There he is. He's got a big hairy paw on him. He looks great in a watch. Tubster, everybody uh, uh, in, in the chats right now, should Tobster get the Guinness or not? Everybody, chat away. Andrew Wolkowicz with the $5. Show Dirk some love and support. Give an up, vote, and subscribe. Share the channel for others to enjoy. Do it. I'm going to give you a big boom. The man with the clef, the handsome man. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Everybody's saying yes. I'm going to share. I'm going to share some new pictures that I just got. Uh, this is from Dave. Okay. <laughs> this is funny. You're going to, you can't, you're not going to get out of here alive, my friend, Mr. McDonkey. Uh, oh, shit. They got it for graduation. Look at that. Oh, my God. What a, what a set of parents you are. Thank you, Andrew, for that super chat. Thank you for starting the super chat train. It's Friday night. I don't know. Sheen didn't talk to me about being so late. Um, let's see. Oh, my God. It's a diamond end to see date just two-tone gold. Wow. Adopt me, will you? That is a beautiful congratulations on her graduation. And what a beautiful tribute to send. Oh, that's incredible. Thank you so much. Here's a picture of Morgana. <gasps> She's also 28. How do you have all these 28 year old cats? Can you share your secrets to me? I wish I, I wish you shared it to me beforehand. Cause I, I just, I can't believe she, I don't have her anymore. I just can't believe it. What a beauty. 28. What is your, see, what do you feed them? Can I ask you what you feed them? These are beautiful. These are American short hairs. Calicos are beautiful, and 99.9% .9 of the time, calicos are female. Interesting fact. What a beautiful, 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 beautiful thing. Oh, Mark's the only one with a conscience who says, if it's what he really wants, then go for it. Everyone else is, I mean, listen, you can't lose from, you can't lose from an investment perspective. You will make money. You're not going to lose money on a Guinness. First of all, it's two tones. There's gold in there. You know, it's a highly sought after watch. You're getting it from the dealer. I mean, shit. That's a monumental piece to get. I mean, it's not like they offered you a date just. They offered you a GMT Master 2 Guinness. I mean, sometimes you just have to say, screw it, and then work your way around it, right? It's got to be the way you do it. It has to be. What a beautiful cat. Thank you for that. She's 28 also. How is that at least? Andrew says, give at least two hours of cuddle time, fresh water, and low ash food. Well, they there was certainly more than two hours of cuddle time. <laughs> it was all day cuddle time. And low ash. I never even considered that low ash. Like, what food do you give them that has low ash? I was giving her this stuff called Smalls, which was this high protein, 200 calories a pack, came frozen. I defrosted it. It was 100% beef because she couldn't have any chicken. Uh, you know, and in the end, I was giving her tuna, 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 because she was going crazy for the tuna. Then I was worried about mercury. I worried about everything, at least everything. It's absolutely terrible. Um, Ray, Ray. Wow. I would love to go on her. Thanks, Dirk. You make it sound so dirty. Oh, you have no idea how you want to see it. Do you know what, you know what she looks like, right? Hold on. Tell you right now. Mm -hmm. I know I should have some music while I'm doing this, right? Images. Let's, uh, this is her. Okay, I'm going to share the screen with you because I want you to know she's one of the most beautiful things. You, I've been on her 800,000 times. This is her, man. 
She is 998 feet. She is a big, big lady. And uh, she's sitting in Philadelphia. She needs a paint job. She has 99% of her tensile strength. She looks a bit peaked. You know, she looks peaked. But all it is is paint. And like all these people are like, she's the rust bucket. She's got no rust on her at all. She did have all of her fittings pulled out. Now, she never had any kind of like Titanic or Queen Mary style wood. There was never any wood on this ship. This ship was 100% fireproof. The only wood that was ever found on the SS United States was found uh, in the Steinway and Sons pianos, of which there were five of them. And uh, they, they covered it with some kind of flame retardant lacquer. And they proved it by pouring gasoline on the piano and lighting it. And it just went out. Um, so she's in Philadelphia. She was decommissioned in 1969 due to the jet age. And uh, she had various owners, almost got scrapped a couple of times until finally the daughter of the, uh, the granddaughter of the uh, designer of the SS United States created the SS United States Conservancy. And she is the chair. And we are all just satellites around her. And uh, it's, it's a beautiful thing. She's she's still there. Um, she was built in uh, Newport News, which is a very very famous uh, one of well probably the most famous American uh, shipbuilding next to like you know it's Cox and Gibbs because William Francis Gibbs was the designer of this ship. So anyway, it's a beautiful place. Uh, uh, if you ever come to New York, uh, we'll take a ride and we'll go see it because you'd probably love it. The engine, uh, the engine rooms are intact. The screws, two of them we sold off because we needed the money. Two we still have. One of them's in a museum. One of them's on the deck. And the engines, the, everything's still in there. It's just that she she only had like modular fittings. It was very mid century modern, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So. Um, it could be easily refitted very simply, very, very simply. Um, Easy E says, hey, Andrew, you had to give my putty low ash for the rest of his life as well as better for him and weight control. Interesting. I was never, I don't know anything about this low ash. It's like I've, I've been through so much stuff and I don't know anything about this ash thing. Easy says, 99 says, love balloon. Nana. I give tuna water as a treat. Also small treats at sunset. They always try for more. Yeah, tuna water. They love that. My friend has Maine Coons. They're an amazing breed. They're huge Abyssinians, but they are on cocaine practically. Not, yeah, they're nuts and they'll rip your house to shreds. Ray Ray says, go wild. Go wild in the country with the snakes in the grass. Great song. I don't know that song. Go wild. Wild, wild. Uh, Andrew Okovich, Ray Ray, she is a calico. She is indeed. Is uh, it is not a breed. Uh, it, it, it is not a breed. Calico is a. Um, I read all about it. Calico is just happens. It's uh, you could get two black cats and, and a calico happens. It's some kind of crazy thing that happens. It's it's like a miracle of of natural sciences. Um, so low ash is better for kidney function. No one ever advised me. Now I have to look at all the things I ever fed her to see what kind of ash was involved. Ash. Wow. The Bruce Lim says it's about the carbon. Wow. Oh, Scott's leaving us. Where are you going, Scott? Have a great evening, folks. Have to sign off. Thanks for all the great cat and watch. Them. Scott, we love you, man. Thanks. Uh, we'll see you next time. Uh, same, uh, same bash time, same bash channel. And it was great to have you. And thanks for being such a big part of tonight's show. Uh, you're fantastic. We appreciate it. Everybody say good night, Scott. Good night, Scott. Um, I don't know what the deal is with uh, Oshina Mali. Don't know. Thinking of buying a long-aged rabbit. Oh, don't you cook it, Ray Ray. I know it goes on in the west of Ireland. Because me granny showed me. Don't like that very much. Um, yeah. So, uh, a rabbit. Rabbits don't live very long. That's the problem with rabbits. As cute and cuddly and wonderful as they are, they just don't last very long. You know, it's that scares the shit of me. Ray, uh, easy E, three dollars with a super sticker. But um, bum bum. Let's give you a super, uh, a super sticker. Thank you for the super stickers. Super time flies. Hey, Dirk, over from Machine. Hey, 
Good to see you. Time flies. What's he talking about over there? He started late and blah, 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 blah. He's coming. Da -da. What's the name of that song? It's coming. Oh, rain. Uh, 62 people. Ush will ramble on for two hours. <laughs> yeah, well, there he is. <laughs> Shut up, easy. Shut your mouth. <laughs> Vaughn says, Oshin sent me. <laughs> the father in the right place. Lord H. PayPal with the $4.99. Bang. A Bang a gong. Get it on. You started an hour late today. No, I'm still on. Uh, well, for you guys, it's an hour late. I'm still on fucked up time because we don't have daylight savings till early oh. next week. Or this weekend or something. Oh. Yeah, that dead zone happens for about two weeks. There's a shift. It takes two weeks to move over. Wow. Dez was here at the top of the show, and now he's back. He went over to you. Look at that. Everybody's so loyal to the O'Malley man. Jem right. Hader's here. Dana Gutierrez is here. Uh, you know, we talked about for the last... We talked about cats. Everybody showed all their cats. Watches and cats. So you've been on for an hour already? Yeah. Oh, fuck. We should, we should have synchronized that. We I'm should so have sorry. synchronized. Yeah. I'm yeah. so sorry. That's a fuck. No, up. I went on at six o'clock. Yeah. And I was like, wait a minute. And I didn't realize that you had, you had scheduled for that time. Anyway, that's fine. We'll figure it out. It's fine. I'm so sorry. I didn't realize. It's fine. Yeah. I should have thought, you know, because I think, well, who needs a drink? I was like, it's an hour late for the Americans. Yeah. Well, that's okay because everyone's drinking. That's welcome. Rather than, you know, fucking up the Brits and everyone else over on this side by coming on an hour early. Right. Fuck the Americans. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, no, that's what you mean. It, no, but it, no, it plays into the work. Fuck you, it. America. America. Of, fuck a, yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> a lot of people are like, you know what? It's too early for a drink, but I'm, you know, so that way an hour late. I, I figured it worked. Best. It hasn't been too early to have a drink for me in a, quite a while. Yeah. Uh, uh, Easy says, Ush, how are you, brother? Uh, then I've got all the people who came over here Hudson Harvey, Dirk, I was unfaithful to him. You dirty, dirty, dirty slapper. Back with you now. <laughs> so sorry. Easy says, It's Ushberg and Dirkovitz. Oi, but, listen. But by, next week, but by next week, it's all fixed. The time, yeah, yeah, will, yeah. by next week, we're 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 changed. So, yeah, today That's would have been the day to make that change. All right. You would have been annoyed. It was an hour of cats. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Wolkowicz, by the way, has two 28-year-old cats. 28-year-old? Two 28-year-old cats. Jesus. No comment. I mean, it's unbelievable. 28 years old. That's incredible. I'm now Mr. Milgaus. Well, hello. Omega <laughs> fanboy Ian. I know. I'm an Omega guy, but I cheat with Milgaus. Everybody's got to have a dirty whore on the side, right? It feels good, right? You know, now we got a pretty hundred people. Dirty whore on the side. She's she's like one of those it's hookers pretty... that you go to meet at like one of the higher end hotels. Yeah, she's a high end escort <laughs> on the side. She's not a dirty hooker. <laughs> no, she's not a street whore. It's Andrew with five Canadian. Let's all show some love and support for our favorite Irish lads. Upvote everyone and subscribe. And he's given us so much tonight. You get. Andrew is a super chatter and he's a Patreon and a Patriot and a man with a very nice cleft. I love a cleft. I wish I had a really great cleft like Cary Grant. It's very people uh, with clefts get cast in roles. Yeah. If you What's have a that cleft, guy? Yeah. When, they're, when, it, when they're casting for a movie and they have 80 guys come in for the same role, the, the best actor is there on their list, but the second best or third best who has a cleft might get the role because clefts film really well. It's also super hyper masculine. Who's the guy from Aaron Brockovich? What's that guy's name? Handsome guy with a big cleft. Aaron Brockovich. Uh, Is it the same guy from Batman? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Him. Aaron. Uh, no. What's Aaron name? Eckhart. Eckhart. That's him. Yeah. That guy's got like a Kurt, uh, a Kurt yeah, Douglas. You could you could stick a cigarette in there. With yeah, he could hold there. a cigarette in there. Yeah, or a guitar pick while he's on stage. Ooh, extra picks. 
I don't know why clefts just look good. They just look good, man. They, they just, look, it's very attractive. They film very well. Now, in the ancient art of Chinese face reading, which I actually do, believe it or not, I don't know if you know that, uh, sang men or men sang, depending. Do um, Chinese people ever have clefts? I rarely, but they they consider the cleft when you see someone with a cleft, it means they're extremely vulnerable to um, compliments. So any everybody gets disarmed when you compliment them, right? Not everybody. No, <laughs> I know a couple say, of people who well, love that shit. No, v- vain people love it. Well, you're misreading what I'm saying. Maybe oh. I'm not explaining myself correctly. They get extra disarmed. So in other oh. words, when you go to a person, even if they're stoic, and you say, you look great today, your hair looks great, they go, oh, thanks, and it disarms them a little. If you compliment in the same way, in a vain way, a person with a cleft, uh-huh. it's their world. They'll, they'll suck on that for days. Oh. And that's, what the, that's what's in Sang Men, they say, that a person with a cleft suffers from an extreme vulnerability to compliments. And I al- always used to think, well, that makes sense. Because you know all these actors, they're fucking, they're the oh. most vain, vain and and, oh. and uh, yeah, uh, superficial and and in in desperate need of constant compliments. And there they you are. are with so their generous. This award goes to you. You are so generous. Your your humanity shown through that role. The fucking smoke arse. Fuck off. Yeah, I mean it's like. Actors are f- notorious, and singers and so on are notoriously uh, gracious for compliments and so on. Uh, they kind of thrive on them, and they live on them, and they they survive on them. So if you if you have this propensity to to that, whatever you call that, if there's a word for that, uh, and you wind up on the movie screen, so it kind of makes sense. It all all things. It's entropy. All p- pieces fall into place eventually, sure. right? Sure. Yeah, the people who need that kind of affirmation wind up on the fucking silver screen. They do. Des Ferris with five euros. Let's give you the. Let's give you a triangle. I gave you both because you know what you deserve. Two. You know what I used tonight? I used uh, Len- Leonard Bernstein, the Maller. <gasps> Why? How much did you get? A hundred bucks. Oh, a hundred bucks. We have Kieran Kelly, guitarist, 10 euros. Great to see you, Dirk. Great to see you too, Kieran. I teach really late now, so I miss your live shows. Well, well, I hope you watch them on the replay. My sincere sympathy about the wonderful Laverne, but super to see you still rocking. I'm, uh, you know, I'm doing what I can, man. And you deserve a... Nuclear explosion. Yeah, like I was telling everybody yesterday. Everybody's like, yeah, you look like like you're doing okay. I'm like, yesterday I thought I was doing so well. And then Paul was like, what's wrong with you? You It's like shit's not funny. You know, like I'm not getting the jokes. Except except Andrew had a really funny joke uh, (laughs) that I thought was great. Uh, What do you call call a 16-year-old girl from North Belfast? A 16-year-old virgin from North Belfast. I don't know. New in town. Oh, God. Damn it. <laughs> you know, after, uh, did you notice in the in the Ireland video, I cracked a joke, Northsiders versus Southsiders. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Somebody else came in with a nice one. Because I should have done both sides. I, I only did the, I did a North side joke. Because mm-hmm. I'm a North side. Because you're a North, and you're a North side fellow. North side. Right. And, uh, but somebody wrote one. I don't know who it was. I can't remember. They said, uh, why did the South Side girl date the North Side boy to get her handbag back? <laughs> <laughs> Which was pretty good. Lord with a passport with 20 euros. Paulie might have moved slow but it was only because Paulie didn't have to move for anybody. That's, Is that a movie uh, quote? Good, good fellas. There you go. Pa- Paulie was the Don. He was the. Oh, all right. I live with a Paulie, so I see that name, and I just get confused with things. I'd say I'd say twenty is huge. 
Yeah, it's pretty huge. I was like, wait a second, that's not befitting that's the 20 chat. euros, man. That's 23, 24 bucks. It um, is. Yeah, that's the scene. It's Polly. He's the Don. That's um, uh, that's uh, Paul Servino, right? Servino, Paul, Paul Servino. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, you know, apparently one of he was an incredible chef. Uh, he used to do all the morning chat shows. You know, the little the hen shows that they have over in Europe and that over here. He would make sauce and manicotti. Okay, you know, cannelloni, all this stuff. He was a master chef. Made his own gnocchi. Made his own pastas. And apparently, and his, da his daughter is Mira. Right? Yeah, Mira she's an Serena. Oscar winner, and he's not. Isn't that funny? And what did she get it for? For uh, Mighty Aphrodite? She right? did. Yeah, she was good yeah. in that, though. You know, she's playing one of those. It's types. not a great film. It's not a great film, but she was good in it. I will yeah. say that. As far as Woody Allen films go, it was not great. No. Marty Mannion, five euro ninety nine. Congrats on the old sods video. Scruffy wasn't around. Dot announcement yesterday. Yes. Incredible. Uh, we were talking extolling the incredible powers of Ashino Mali and his uh, filmmaking prowess yesterday on my show. Here is a big boom right. for you. Yeah, man, I'm proud of you. I, I, I like, you know, I say, listen, I'm not trying to blow smoke up my friend's ass, but like, you know, I was sitting here with his brother and Paul, and we're like, oh, you how did one guy do this? Yeah, you know, we watched it together oh. while we were having the diner food. And Barolo, we're drinking Barolo with, with diner burgers, <laughs> and watching a thing on Ireland. I'm watching an Ireland video. I mean, must have been good for a Guinness and a whiskey, though. <laughs> we had Guinness. Then I had a Guinness the next day. He was drinking tequila. Did, did Emmett like his shots of his watch on his wrist? There was tons of those. Yeah, he likes that. Yeah, I mean, he's like, so proud of his Mariner. Yeah. He loves but it. It was all about it. the tattoo, where it was like also the watch, also. <laughs> yeah, well, also, well, it was very cool to let people know about that ancient written language and how your brother has it to spell out for the love of his children. Yes, it's amazing that he did that. You know, yeah, people don't even cool. know what that is. But it was good to to talk about it in the video, uh, pique people's interest first. Because there's one thing just to talk about it later in the video and go, oh, by the way, this is language you know carved out in stone. Mm -hmm. But there's another thing then to say, I want you to look at his his tattoo. That's text, and it means something. More about that later. That makes people go, huh? And then when it comes around later, they go, ah. and that's the art of storytelling. By the way, um, are we going to talk about Kay Middleton or not? I mean, other than the fact that we found out that she's got cancer and the whole worlds of succubi have been trying to ruin their life. And it turns out, oh, you scumbags, she's been like dealing with cancer. Holy shit. Yeah. Um, um, uh, Michaela was in my chat going shame on everyone trying to fuck, you know, now they should shut the fuck up. You know, I was like, you're right. Like, I mean, it's human nature to speculate and all that, but. Man, they must feel fucking shit now. They don't feel shit because they're scumbags, you know. Yeah. And it's, there's still going to be people now that now that she's made this video, this brave video where she's basically telling everybody, "Please fuck off," you know. This is no, what's she, going on. Uh, yeah, but in the most in the sweetest uh, in the way. sweetest way. But you know, that's like you know, you and I would say fuck off. She was absolutely lovely. In oh the my beautiful. god, she was so measured, and and she she talks about everyone else going through that. Yeah. You know, and she's saying thank you for everyone's concern. Everyone's concern. TMZ were fucking inventing horse shit about you, but she 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 flies high. The woman is full of class. I mean, you know, I don't give a shit about the royals. At the end of the day, I'm an Irish man. But that woman, if all the royals were like that, I'd be the biggest fan. I'd be like, fuck it, I don't care about the 800 years of. I'm a fan of hers, and I'm certainly no fan of the fucking crown. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, Easy E, ten U.S. dollars. Let's hit you with. Uh, let's hit you with that. Thank you so much for that. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. Quote is from. Well, that's from Shakespeare. That is Henry the Fourth, right? Great to see both Irish Jewish lads in, in the, house. the house. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom, Shalom Shabbat. Uh, Look at this. That was the day of her wedding. I mean, look at her. 
I mean, it's the most you have a feature. super crush on her. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would tear her apart like warm bread and forget about it. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> fucking Jesus Christ. Is a, that's the most delicate creature on earth. Can I, I pause like- your video for that? <laughs> 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 um, can I tell you about who might be the most beautiful girl in the world currently? Oh God! From a gay man, tell me, enlighten See, me. We, we we have a much more measured idea of who beautiful is, but this girl's got the longest legs I've ever seen on a woman in my life. Okay, who is Kaya, Kaya Gerber? Oh yeah, we spoke about her. I know, but she's in this new show called Palm Royale with. Uh, Kristen Wiig and Carol Burnett. And, okay. I mean, it's this crazy 1960s Palm Beach thing. Kaya Gerber. She's on the screen and I'm looking and I said to Paul, I said, who the fuck is that? Yeah, we because she's her. couldn't tell who she, she was because she had like stuff on. Then she, she stood the Omega up. event that time when we covered it on the I know, but she she's got... sit, standing next to her mom who right. remains a stoic statue beauty, American sure, beauty, sure, of sure. course. But like I mean, shit, like yeah, <laughs> shit. Uh, she gets up, and she must be about six one. Yeah, she's super, super tall. Uh, and let me see, let me see if I can find a picture of her from I'm that just show. Gonna keep this woman's face on the screen for another second. While yeah, she's gorgeous. That. Yeah, yeah, look yeah. Look at the look in her eye. This is a scorching intelligence. This is a woman with poise and class and. Just, just amazing. Just and and given that role, you know what I mean. She was given that role for good or for bad. Like it's, it's, it's a tough role. It, it, it's full of privilege and wealth, but it's almost stained by the fact that you have this weight on your shoulders to always be perfect in front of your adorning crowd and so on. It's a prison. Yeah. It is. It's a prison. I don't care. I mean, she can't just go fuck off to the pub. You know what I mean? No. You can't do that. She can't just say, she has you know. To chew, she has to chew 32 times at the table. That's a fucking rule, man. And before she swallows. And she can't eat fucking shellfish anymore in her life. And she has all of the, so all the slew of rules of things that she has to be. And she took the role and she just carried it. And she's carrying. I'm speaking better in the past tense, which is wrong. She's she's been carrying it so well. I mean, I just said it on my show, like between her and Princess Di, like all the good ones, man. Why can't this shit happen to fucking these slags that wind their wiggle their way into the fucking royal family? No, it has Dude, to why can't it happen to that disgusting creature? shrew? Right, that I hate with all yeah, of my soul. Out in, that... out in L.A. Ugh. Did you hear Prince Harry got booed when he was at the, he was at some, uh, the, the, the Gershwin prize for Elton John and he showed up and people uh, audibly booed him. Booed him because he's a fuckwit. Because he's a fuckwit is right. That's he, just, absolutely... he, just, he got tamed by the vagina. Like, don't do that. That's not a man. It's not it's a man. Gi- it's Gina. What's your name? Gina? Gina. Gina. Here's a funny joke. What do you call a North Sider in a museum? Lost. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? Was that Lord of the Passport? The passport. Oh, fucker. <laughs> okay. Game on. Fucker. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Because all those posh twats on the other side of the Liffey, right? Yeah, because they're the ones with the money. They're the posh ones. We're the ones with the character. <laughs> you're right. No, did, didn't you say in the film that, that they've got all the money, but like you're the one they're screwing or something like that? Didn't you allude to that? No, I said the joke was uh, that, on, that the, the, the difference between a <laughs> south side girl and north side girl. The north side girl has fake jewelry and real orgasms. Oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> so it's the character thing and the money thing. So, you know, then you fill in the rest yourself. You reverse it, you know. Phonetic Duck says that uh, people who slandered Cater Scum, but Dirk can slam. I'm not slant. That was a joke. Come on. Never been to Belfast, and I'm sure everyone's beautiful there. I would love to go there. I wasn't slamming that. Come on. That's what I've been to Belfast. The most quiet pubs I've ever been in. Is that right? Si- silent. 
I've never been in a silent pub before. I'm like, is that is there's that... absolutely no sound in this pub? People are sitting around drinking. There's no music on. There's, there's no, no music. There's no laughter or what about the match? I guess oh, maybe I just had a bad experience. Maybe I was just being judgmental. <laughs> yeah, that one. <laughs> no, but like it's just you know, the difference between you know because. The Northern Irish, they're very different to the Irish, you know. I mean, the, their humor is different. I first came across Northern Irish humor when I went to the Gale Talk, and it was up in Donegal, which is technically the Republic of Ireland. That's not part of the six counties. That's not 0044 when you dial their house, right? Right. It's 353, right? Uh, beautiful part of the country where Enya is from. Right, and uh, uh, so I I wind up and the Gale talked up there, and I come across a lot of Northern Irish. And I was fourteen years old. I never hung out much with Northern Irish, and I came across the Northern Irish humor, and it's just I'm like, what? So I remember describing it at, at the time as like, this is a Northern Irish joke. Like, see that man over there? What that guy there? Yeah, that man there. He's my dad. What, excuse me? That's your father right there? Yeah, that's my dad. You go, oh my God, I can't believe it. And then they go, <laughs> you're like, that's not a joke. <laughs> that's not funny. Is that, you, just, is that you just misled me, and that's somehow funny? Because, of course, the Irish, what do we pride ourselves on? Our drinking, our laughter, our humor, all of that shit. The minute we encounter an Irishman you know, who, who can't tell a fucking joke. We're like, oh, no, you're, oh, that's weird. Like, you immediately put a whiskey in front of them. Drink it, drink it, show me your Irish. Fucking drink it down it right now. Like, you have to have these basic ability <laughs> abilities equipped. There's a difference. There's something something different. I'm going to get loads of shit now for what I just said. I mean, I'm not familiar with the, I mean, I know a bunch of Northern Irish people, and I, I've never found their humor to be weird or, I have to think about it. I guess it's just it's strange. different all over the world. It's just strange. It's like you get in the car of a of a of a Republic of Ireland person. You just turn the wheel slightly to the left. It's just very. It's just there's something oddly weird, different about it. You know. It's, yeah. Well, they're going to be. They're you know they're, they're under British rule. They're kind of, there's going to be something going on. I remember at the time in that quiet pub, and we're talking thirty years ago. Uh, someone's saying it's the reason why it's quiet is because they're on the watch out for bombs coming in. The well, there that could be true. I mean, yeah, they're gonna they stay suffer, quiet. yeah, terrorism straight keep up. Your, yeah, keep your ears open, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, hippie PA underscore PA four dollars. And happy Friday, guys. Wearing my Explorer 216550 from 88 and cooking burgers and truffle fries for the family, Fetty Otego cigars. Is that a great cigar? I know nothing about cigars, but which this man does. You, which style have you got, Hippie? You got white or black? I'm curious. Great watch, though. Here's a gun. What was a watch that people didn't want for so long? Now every. Now everybody <sighs> wants that watch. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. It's so popular. It's so popular. Dean with the three dollar, three pound ninety nine super sticker. Let's give you the try. It's like six US dollars, so that's probably better than that. <laughs> but the triangle's so fun. Everybody loves the triangle. You know? Because it's got levity. Yeah. Blue Copper Coffee says it's a lot different now. I've heard that. I I, I would love to, to, to go to Belfast. I haven't been there. And I really need to see that part of the country. Well, the weird part for me was I went up in the bus the first time. And we went around us, you know, these roundabouts. This Ireland is full of roundabouts. That's how they figure out all traffic problems. They just put a roundabout. It's in. so smart, though. We should have them here. <sighs> There's just They're roundabouts smart. everywhere. They're fucking so annoying. But anyway, they work though. They do. Okay. Work. Okay. Okay. I'll take it. But uh, this roundabout had a big flower bed in the middle, and it was the crown in flowers. <laughs> And I was like, ooh, you're not in uh, fucking Kansas anymore, uh, kid. Uh, Shit. Uh. <laughs> so it's it was, easy uh, for us to say. We're like, ooh. 
<laughs> the realm. <laughs> it's like that meme. You don't look at Instagram or TikTok, but there's one that goes, it's a, this uh, Muslim guy, and he's like, ooh, brother, ooh. What's that, brother? I don't know if you know that one. But it's really funny. <laughs> brother, ooh. They use it for absolutely everything. Yeah. Uh, Danny Gutierrez, five U.S. dollars. Dirk, does the quote on the Snoopy Moonswatch refer? Yes, it does. Uh, from like 1960 something. I, asked, and that, in the I film. asked my crowd that. Nobody could say. Did Daniel? Did you say it? I can't sleep that. Night. It's it's alluded to because Charlie Brown says it. Obviously, because Snoopy just goes wah, wah, wah. right. So, uh, yes, it does. And uh, uh, well, then it makes sense. I yeah, of my course. My crowd were saying it was just fun. It was just a fun thing to say. But I was hoping it was a reference. It is indeed. Okay. And uh, thank you so much. And for that, you get a go. I love that one. Uh, I've had this weird rumble in my ear. In one ear. It's water. Turn your head to one side. I've tried, but it's not like happening all the time. It happens every once in a while. I'll get this fluttery sound. It's flood. Yeah, that's water. Is that what it that happened is? in the shower? It got into your ear. You literally have got a best thing to do. Go to bed, lying the right way down. Give your head a few whacks if you want. Okay. It'll work its way out of your ear down onto the pillow overnight. It's been going on for a week, though. You think it would be out by oh, now? Oh, shit. Okay. It's a stroke. <laughs> okay, a week is too long. No, it should be like a day. <laughs> it's been going on. No, it's been going on. Like, I'll just be sitting here and all of a sudden I'll get this thing that'll go. So I, of course, like, go, I'm coming, Laverne. Oh, fuck that shit. I don't know what the fuck it is, but it's very weird. Who's a doctor out there? Can anybody tell me? That is weird. It might be wax. Rhea There's definitely no wax in Dirk's ears because Dirk has a problem. I stick everything in my ear. I put keys in there. <laughs> I'm obsessed with, like, uh, uh, with like Q-tips, like when I went to go get my in ears done, they they you know they squeeze the mold down the down the ear canal. The girl goes, "Wow, you have the cleanest ears I've ever seen." I'm like, "Yeah," because I'm constantly making sure that there's nothing weird in there. It could be tinnitus, maybe maybe it's some form of tinnitus. I don't know. I used to always say tinnitus. I used to say tinnitus too until I saw all the doctors call it tinnitus, and I always said tinnitus. So because Paul has it, you know. oh, Paul has it. Okay, he has it for realsies. We got Easy E with ten U.S. dollars. Who says that? Ten U.S. dollars. Words. <laughs> All the words. Thank you, Easy E. Paul, the classic Speedmaster professional in black, or the new white dial one can see myself owning both well that's impossible to go i mean the black one i mean the white one is a, the new girl in town you can't uh listen the listen the black speedmaster professional is the classic isn't it everyone should have one and no collection is 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 complete without one it's nice right. the white dial's great it's great but you know it's the new kid in town it will never rise to the ranks of being that but it's cool Right? What do you say? Yeah, uh, I would say. Um, I say yeah. I would say yeah. I think uh, the white will have a certain appeal. Uh, the black is the one is will always be the one. Mm. Eddie ten U.S. dollar says she's going to be fine in reference to Kate Middleton. She's young. She's forty two and has the best doctors. True, access to medicine. Us Cretans, I'm assuming that's what you meant, can't get. She'll be all right. She already has her kids, so there's no concern for an heir. I guess at the end of the day, that's really what we're talking about. So let's give you the big. Georgie Porgy's, you know, next in line, so he'll be fine. Uh, I just, she's just, you know, it's like, it just happens to the nicest people. She's lovely, lovely, lovely. And that nasty 
gold, gold digging shrew in LA who's probably had a, a vaginal rejuvenation done like 16 times. You know, she's one of those classic women that would have a like a hymen rehymenization so she could, ma- she probably did that. Is I that a word? Yeah, of course it is. Rehymenization, Jesus. Sure, you can actually, you know, like if you're going to marry the king, you used to be, you used to have to be a virgin. I don't think that you do anymore, right? I wouldn't know. But back in the day, in order to marry the king, you had to be presented. They would make sure you were intact. Oh, you would be examined, and they would make sure you were intact. And if you weren't, you were not eligible and you probably were murdered back in the day. They probably stone you or throw you out of a tower, as they did back in those days. <laughs> Look at the view from this tower. Boom, <laughs> poof. Um, your sister is awfully pretty. Um, so nowadays they can actually go in there and they rehumanize you. Jesus yeah. Christ. Andrew Olkovich says over 200 in the room, 206. Look at that. Look at us go. Boom. Let's give that for you, Andrew. That's way <laughs> fucking better looking than Oppenheimer. Now, here, here's a, because uh, it's real. Uh, here's a question. Um, so, we know that King Charles has had some hospital visits recently. Mm-hmm. Okay, everybody was worried about him a matter of weeks ago mm-hmm. because you know, his cancer on the way or whatever. Um, now, if he passes, who's queen? Who is there? Is he is that bitch gonna be queen? No, right? If if who passes, King Charles, William is instantly king. William is king, therefore, Kate's queen. Kate, no? is, Kate is queen. Once he becomes king, she is queen. Oh, I'm so mad. Kate, you better beat this shit, man. I want yeah. her as queen, man. If she's yeah. queen, I'll be like, okay, I'll put aside my Irishness. You're the shit. You're she O'Malley, queen. royalist. Royal. I'll become a royalist. <laughs> if that's the fucking queen of England, she would be. Damn, queen. that's. She's everything. I mean, she's she will be a magnificent queen. Don't you yeah. want to see her with a scepter and that? And what do you call that robe? That one that like Freddie Mercury wore with the. She'll be doing the Christmas Day, the Christmas Day fucking address to the to the. She won't to the he British. Will. Oh, he'll will because he's the he's yeah of course. Of he's course, sovereign. Sorry. Yes, of course. I forget. It has to be but the still, sovereign. There's so many still, words. She's the fucking queen. What a fucking immaculate queen! If you're gonna yeah. have one, you know. Well, that you. Know. I don't want. I don't know why I care, but you know, because you find I, her I incredibly do. attractive. Yes, <laughs> probably. <laughs> okay. I mean, it. not probably, absolutely, <laughs> because you're obsessed with Kate Middleton. Because you've said she's the most beautiful creature. You're you're obsessed with that. Have and you ever she seen is. her wear anything twice ever? Well, Never. she's. <laughs> she doesn't have to. I mean, how big is the wardrobe? Is it? 400 it's, miles no it's deep. they bring her things she wears them and then they discard them she never sees them again it's not like she hangs it in the closet like somebody this brings her wear, this is a woman who can wear a completely entirely blue get up like look at the look at this that's mm-hmm. just blue what am i wearing today i'm wearing blue with blue earrings blue whatever the hell's going on in there that's a family. sapphire surrounded a sapphire. by diamonds what do you call that hat? Boom. I can't remember. Fascinator. A fascinator. You're right. I forgot. Shit. It's supposed to be learning. Here. Pays to be gay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fascinator. It's a what, fascinator. A, what a wonderful word. Yeah. That's when you go to a fancy British do like at the Kensington Palace. Or the Kensington Palace. Right. By the way, I was, I was uh, tested on my English. Uh, just the other day, because I did a preview of part two. And it's a little three-minute preview of part two of the Ireland video. If you made it to the end, as you can click on the on the first three minutes of the second part. Mm. And it's all cerebral. Or not cerebral, it's uh, mystical or whatever. And uh, I'm talking about how ridiculous the scenes are. Like, am I seeing things? Am I really seeing ancient ruins next to a white sand beach and stuff like this? And then I said, murder of crows around a white horse. 
Hmm. And I got an email going, is, is that a word? Why did you say murder? Because that's not what gonna, you call a group. Because that's what you call it. And I was like, uh, and then I started looking up all the different terms for different groups of animals. Like and, a, oh, man. A, a rabbit warren. A warren of rabbits. Yeah. I sent myself the list here. There's a really cool list. Okay. So we know. Let me see if I can get any of these. Okay, okay. So I'm, I'll test you. I'll test you. And guys, don't don't help Dirk because he's got a <laughs> very he's got a very he's a big reader. This guy reads a f- two books a fucking week. Okay, so you better fucking know. Okay, and somebody just gave away the best one. You shithead. Sorry, uh, Eric B. We love you. That's one of my favorites. An unkindness of ravens. That's what that that's what ravens are an unkindness an unkindness. He gave away one of my favorites. It's okay, Eric B. You're clearly very well read uh, because this is the kind of sh- this is why the the English language is one of the most fascinating languages. Okay, so I'm going to give you a couple. So let's start with some easy one. Mm. Elephants. Oh, herd. A parade. A parade. This one, you know, camels. Uh, camels. Du, 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 du. Caravan. Exactly. Yeah. We know bees. Bees are. Yes, I know bees. 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 Uh. It's because I'm putting it backwards. That's making one. it hard for you. You know what bees are in the group. A collective, a hive. De- Des Farrell, I already said it. Crows. It's a murder. Murder of crows. crows. That I know. Yeah. Bees. Uh, you know. I'm sure I do. Gonna, I'm just, you're going to kick yourself. All right. Let me kick myself. A swarm. Uh, didn't I say swarm? You didn't say anything. Go back in the re- rewind the video when we were done. You didn't say swarm. I think I did. You didn't say anything. Or did, did you I say swarm? <laughs> okay. So, you know, you know, fish. Fish is a school. Bravo. What about ferrets? Ferrets. Um, this is a weird one. It, it's okay if you don't get uh, it. It's, it's a business. Oh, dude. Wow. Business of ferrets. Uh, JS had ferrets. So to be fair, it's not. Yeah, uh, that's uh, not a lot of people know that. Okay. Uh, what about kangaroos? That's a weird one, isn't it? They're like like a mob. Dude, you fucking legend. Is that you right? Have it, you don't have it open on Google in front of you, do you? No, I'm right here. Jesus Christ, dude. I didn't know it was a mob. A mob. And this <sighs> do you know what the, you know what my favorite one is though? Do you Which know one? what le- lemurs are? Lemurs. Yeah. Let me look. I no, have it here. You, no, I saw it. I what? saw it. I'm not going to cheat. I saw it. Do you know how I knew this? Because fat actress Kirstie Alley used to keep lemurs. And she goes, you want to see my conspiracy? That's, it's amazing. In, the English language is juicy. It's dripping of amazing, <laughs> Good descriptive. Shit. It's it's onomatopoeic. I love this. Yeah, right. Bob and <laughs> So bad. Sorry, anybody down under. I just love all of this stuff. Uh, so we know wolves are a pack. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, here's one that creeps me the fuck out. Snakes. Oh, uh, fucking uh, snakes. Oh, shit. Snakes. snakes, snakes, snakes. Right. Paul hates snakes. snakes. And it reminds you of the fact that snakes are born from eggs. Oh, Jesus. Are they fucking gross? Uh, Snakes are the worst thing that that was ever created. By the way, no, our, everything has arms or legs or tentacles of some sort. Everything crawls around. Now, fucking snakes. Now we're just gonna just be like a head is and it, a fucking tail. That's there's something wrong with that. So a snake pit is where they live, and the den is when pit, there's yeah, it's a nest. Oh, blah. <laughs> blah. I don't like the word nest anyway. <laughs> I'll give you two. I'll give you two more. We'll move Good. on. Yeah. Uh, uh, rats. Rats. 
Is it? Is this something that like I should know off the top of my head? It's, it's so bad because it, it makes it reminds you of why we use certain words in in English for humans. It's really bad. What? Yeah. You realize where a lot of words come from. Rats. Rats are a colony. Oh, a colony. Oh, of course. Uh, smack, 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 smack. Uh, and, uh, and here's a nice one. Falcons. Uh, falcons. Uh, now, David, my father-in-law, has... Uh, uh, what does he? What, what, what does he have right now? He's got a bunch of birds that keep coming to his. He had herons, and I know that those are called a siege of herons. A siege, and, and he yeah. had. I think it's a cast of falcons. You're fucking right on the yeah. money, dude. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, and you know what peacocks are a muster. A muster of peacocks. Yeah. Now I heard uh, baboons was a congress. <laughs> that's what I heard. Baboons is a Congress. That's what I heard. That I always thought it was, was a, a troop of baboons, but I like Congress better. A Congress, no, a I Congress, know. and I love owls. That's owls I mean. are. Oh wait, I know what owls are. You know, you know what it is. Uh, 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 uh yeah, it's fucking amazing. It's very. It's cool. Parliament. You, you, dude, you have an incredible command over the English language. Yeah. Let me just tell you that. Parliament right of Owls. Now. <laughs> right now. Officially. I read a lot of flowery shit. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, watching. Vol, uh, Vol is right. Baboons are in the Congress. <laughs> You're right. Very smart. You see our crowd. Okay. Andrew Wolkovich, on behalf of Ray Ray. I want to write a song called On Behalf of Ray Ray. Let me see. Is Ray Ray? Uh, let me see. Is he? Andrew, you're a sport, man. Oh, there he is. Uh, is he here? Oh, here is. Were you drinking with them clean Protestants again? <laughs> Told you no sense of humor. <laughs> Oh shit! I gotta get loads of shit for tonight's show. Is that is that it? Was he trying to? Uh, okay. What are you gonna get shit for though? Oh, uh, well, just the north um, map of Aaron. Yes, I gotta send you back your map of Aaron Island. Uh, yes, thank you for reminding me. No cash to super chat. Sorry, bank empty till Monday. He said before she swallows the bank empty till Monday. Woo. All right. Covered. Dude, I can't believe you got some of those. A parliament a, of Owls. A Parliament of Owls. I've always remembered that because it's fucking amazing. Because you just think describe, of all these owls, yeah. these wise owls sitting there making decisions. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Die, a Parliament of Owls. Meanwhile, real parliament is just a bunch of fucking. This is the greatest thing when Shay, who is my niece, who is now a, a, a solicitor in London, she went to she get she got to sit in on parliament and she said, "I've never seen so many old white dead guys." Yeah. <laughs> That's it. How about Leo? Leo quit yesterday. Yes, in Tatisha. Yeah. yeah, he quit. Who knows why? You see Candace fucking Owens got dumped as well by the Daily yeah. Wire. Oh my God. Yeah. Who was that rabbi cunt she was talking to? <laughs> what? Did you see that? Did you see that fucker? No, she you want to play it for the world? Oh no, no. You don't want to look at that stuff. No, is it really bad? Apparently everything is anti Semitism, you know. What is anti Semitism? Use your remote control with the wrong hand. That's anti Semitic. Yeah, it's completely anti Semitic. Oh. Everything. And she went up against him and they had this big debate and she was very fair and logical. She's extremely smart, that woman. She I don't agree with a lot of the stuff she said. She's also but... a psychopath, too. Yeah, she's probably. She's, she's batshit crazy. But anyway, she's out. She's fucking dumped. Oh. She's gone because of that stuff. Because apparently she's anti Semitic, like everyone else. Look at the way I'm drinking my wine. It's anti Semitic. Watch. Stop it. I should have drank it more like that. That's everything can be. Do you just drink it like this? Pink, pinky out? Do you drink pinky out? I don't know. Do I? Let me check. I hope not. a little bit. A little oh, bit. Oh, jeez. No, not that. Not that. That's horrible. 
I don't know. I just maybe did it because I was self-conscious. <laughs> we were flipping around last night on YouTube, and there was like some documentary of these old poofs from London. No one is gayer than old British queens. No one. Yes. Right. <laughs> they were so saucy. <laughs> what were you looking at? We were watching something else, and it came on next. And I was like, what the fuck is this? And this guy's name was like Manifred. He's like, oh, I remember cottaging down in the old Vic and blah, blah, blah. And we had all these flouncy. And he's, you know, dressed perfectly with ascot. And, mm -hmm. you know, he's got patches on his corduroy jacket and perfectly quaffed hair. And he's just an old, you know, old poof. <laughs> he had just come from the coiffeur. <laughs> what is a coif? Raymond, is that like it's a hairstyle. Coif is it like that? A coif is a hairstyle. You go to a hairstylist. It's coiffeur. My mother used to go to Mister Raymond. He was the coiffeur. Coif. Yeah, C O I F F E U R. Coiffeur. Phonetic Duck says, I don't know, Phonetic Duck, you 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 come up with some interesting doozies. Rabbi Cunt is as anti-Semitic as it gets. <laughs> yeah, is that what she called God. him? No, I called him that because the guy <laughs> the guy is a fucking maniac. He's a Which maniac. guy is it? It's not Shmuley. He's a friend of Shmuley. Shmuley is the worst. That guy is the bottom of the barrel. There's some other dude, and he was on there. He called he called her anti-Semitic. Uh, was she uh, being anti-Semitic? Of course not. Jesus okay. Christ. Can they, anyone even define that term anymore? It's undefinable. It's useless. No, it's just it's used a use as a weapon. Yeah, it's just a fucking card pulled at every corner. Yeah. But uh, she was defending herself in the most um, distinguished way, I've got to say. And she's being very logical. And the guy was just like, you know, unless you say October 7th and bang your head off a wall until your nose is bleeding, you're anti-Semitic. You can't, there is no other alternative, you know. So he was just, um, he was fucking indignant as well. He was a fucking prick as well in, in the in the interview. And I, I was like, is this really happening? Am I siding with Candace Owens? <laughs> like, what's happening to the universe right now? But uh, yeah, she got fucking axed. She went up against Shapiro as well, Ben Shapiro, uh, a few months ago for similar stuff. So, and she had Finkelstein on her show, which uh, I thought was cool. Nobody ever gets uh, Rabbi Dove advice on their show, right? They wouldn't dare. <laughs> what? Rabbi Dove advice. You know, you know Dove advice. The rabbi. No, he's a Hasidic rabbi in in New York. Uh huh. And he is well. We'll talk about that on another show. Okay. <laughs> they would never have him on the show because he won't play their game. Oh, that guy is yeah. the guy from Brooklyn. From yeah, correct. Okay. They're not going to have him on. No, no. He's fucking cool as hell. Man. Love he's that guy. an assassin. That guy. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's, yeah, he's great. He's an assassin, and he will. I didn't know he, his name. Oh, it's Rabbi. That's anti-Semitic. Rabbi Dove advice. I should have. He known will. His name. He will Bible quote everyone under the fucking table. He will just he will just incinerate people with his knowledge of of Bible and Talmud and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. This guy is so fucking bright, and he's like, "No, you're wrong," and I'll tell you why. Bam! No. Incinerated. Incinerated. <laughs> yeah, he's amazing. Uh, brand new lover. Yes, Ben Shapiro was her ex boss. She's she's out. I hope she comes back. Fucking. Guns blazing she's gonna with her be own. a brand new lover. I want to be a brand new lover. You're going to be a brand new lover. That's dead or alive, right? No, you just, sang, you, just, you just sang the, the bass line from I Feel Love by Tom Oh, Summer. that's the greatest. Digga, 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 they digga, all did that. I feel love, I feel love, I feel. Yeah, that was Donna Summer. Holy fuck show. I wow. love all of her. Fucking tracks. magical. I love magical. All of it. Hypnotic. The I love voice. on the radio. I love on the radio. Oh, on the radio. I mean, it's hard for me to pick a favorite uh, last dance. Uh, um, MacArthur Park. Her version is the definitive. Because, of course. Richard Harris is like, MacArthur Park is melting in the dark. Oh, the sweet <laughs> green eyes. You can't sing. You can't sing. <laughs> no. Her version is machine. amazing. Yeah. 
Yeah, the Jimmy Webb song. It's a strange song for her to sing as well. But not the way they did it, that of Giorgio Moroto arrangement. It's fucking it's magical. It's amazing. It's just such strange lyrics for a pop disco song. That's doing song. it again. What's Fuck. happened? I got that weird sound. Fuck, I'm stroking out. Somebody just said it is. Who was it? Somebody said they know what it is. Let me find it. They said it was a kind of tinnitus, tinnitus that uh, <laughs> we missed all these funny jokes about murders of crows. Oh, shit. shit. It made, oh, Al Benedetti, one of my patrons, said, Dirk, yeah. it may be pul pulsatile tinnitus, which can indicate an underlying vascular problem. Oh, uh, great. That's great. My blood Drink pressure is very wine. low, though. Drink red, red wine. wine. It helps everything. I have red wine. Should I open it? Yeah. Do you know what I went out and bought Spashers. today? I went out and got um, Antico. What's Antico? The, 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 the vermouth. Oh, Antico. Sorry. Uh, do you say Antico? I thought it was Antico. Antico. It's Italian, Antico. though. Would it be Antico? Antico. It's, yeah, you put the wrong and fastest name. Oh, well, I, there's no rule in Italian. It was so morning. funny because I was shipping out a, a watch <laughs> yesterday and the guy is trying to, like, interpret all the names that i'm writing down vaughan uh, what's this vaughan can you check that i was like oh it's vaughn it's vaughn i was like what the fuck vaughan there's no vaughan it's vaughn antico see i antico. can always tell like i always when antico. i'm doing my when i'm doing yeah i know but it doesn't matter okay. you know like so sometimes you'll read a word in italian and i'll say it and paul will be like no and then it'll be the opposite one Go get your red wine. I I'll don't want right you dropping up. dead in the middle of the fucking basher stream. No. Get your red wine for your red wine helps. It's tannins. Tannins help the arteries. It's the only good thing about that stuff. It also helps you edit videos for 600 hours. Shane McGurk. One more Donna Dirk. Oh, you want, oh, you want, Shane, you want another, uh, Donna Summer, he'll come, he'll sing another Donna Summer bit. Of course he will. He knows the entire catalog. Look at this guy. He got all the fucking shit that I hit him with, most of it, for the animals. I mean, I mean that's amazing. Fucking Parliament of, Owl, of Owls. Who the hell knew that? Incredible. I knew Murder of Crows, but I think I remember that one from, you know, once you hear that, you're like, that's crazy. Kieran Kelly, guitarist, loving the green strap back where it belongs. Oh, well spotted. Well spotted, Kieran. Yes. There, it's back. I'll give you a nice zoom in. We're not talking enough watches tonight, are we? Green strap back where it belongs. Yeah, I went back on on Paddy's day, I think. Thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah, red wine is good for vascular. You know, it loosens the arteries. It's the tannin. Tannins, tannins are good in many, many ways. Tannins relax you. They help. Uh, they're a relaxant. And they're good for your system. What kind of wine is that? Well, let's have a look. I'll do a zoom in. Oh, shit. Look at you. It's out of focus, but okay. Is it? Why? My camera's been auto-focusing tonight, and I've never seen it do that. What's never happened? seen it do that. It is, it is 2019 Bottle Raw. All right. I'm having a San Emilio. Oh, excuse you. So I went to, uh, to dinner with uh, Fergal and Louise. It was lovely. Hey, where'd you go? That place? You're going to get sick. We were we went to Linea d'Ambra and we sat outside on the water. Shit. It was that nice tonight that we were able to sit. They brought us scarves, but it was fine. And it was lovely. Uh, we did we did some uh, uh, we did an aperitivo over by Schiavi and then we walked down. As you do. Hey, cheers, man! Cheers to you on your cheers. port. 
Oh, you did an Anya pour. Bravo. I did. Here, everybody. This is for Laverne. Have a drink yeah, on her. Go. Oh, whoa. That'll do it. Carolyn Martin, the girl with the wrench, says, speaks the truth. That's why Charles had to marry a 19-year-old virgin who were lucky she was a virgin. Or or was she? Oh. That was in the 80s, so maybe. What year was that? 81? What year did they get married? Was she 19? <laughs> she was young. She wasn't 19, was she? Oh, no. Is that a murder of crows? That's a murder of crows. No, that's a fucking seagulls. What's seagulls? Let me check. Jeez, I don't know. A, sh a shithead swarm of seagulls, probably. Uh, I don't see them. They're not on my list. You have a whole see. list? I have a big list here. And that's what I was testing you from. Oh. oh. I couldn't remember them. I don't have that kind of recall at this hour of the night after all the wine. <clears throat> Anybody know what seagulls are? One more Donna Dirk. Gestapo. 11, Look at that. A Gestapo. A Gestapo. <laughs> well, Shane McGee says eleven ninety nine. For that, you get a. You know. What does he that mean? You, one more Donna Dirk. He wants you to sing Donna Summer, another uh, song, though. You did. You did. I feel loved. Uh, uh, okay. Name it. Name it. On, the radio, on the radio. Uh, you remember the lyrics though? Maybe you don't on the radio. Yeah, lyrics, pull up the lyrics and sing it because you know the the air of it. I know how it goes. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, <laughs> someone found a letter you wrote me on the radio. And they told me the world was how you failed. It must have fallen out of a hole in your old brown hole. They never said your name, but we knew who they meant. That's how it goes, right? On the radio, oh, on the radio, oh. I didn't know those are the lyrics. That's crazy. When you sing, your decibel level goes up by 12 trillion. Percent. I'm, I'm, kaboom. That's, I'm very that's lungs, man. That's how lungs work. Wow. Uh, look at these crazy lyrics. Someone found a letter you wrote me on the radio, and they told me, they told the world just how you felt. Yes. Uh, it must have fallen out of a hole in your old brown overcoat. Who wrote these lyrics? These they're, are fucking... they're, they're very sad, and I always felt like that song could have been expanded if it wasn't doomed to be a disco song there could have been a very sad element like that she told herself that like she was listening to the radio and somebody was talking you know because on old radio people are like oh, oh yeah. i want to send this message out to charlene who i love and she's always been the love of my life you know and people would read that shit out on the midnight late night radio and then they'd play a song oh this one's for tony who loves charlene you know or whatever and I felt like that that's where those lyrics begin, but it never develops enough because it's doomed to be a fucking disco song. That's my theory on that. Anyway. I mean, um, disco, when you listen to it now, you go, what the fuck was wrong with me back in the day? The best string arrangements, all those disco all string arrangements, shit, yeah. are the, fucking, work. the bass lines are the insanity. Work. But even today, dude, fucking Dua Lipa, Dua Lipa, the work that goes into a Dua Lipa song is ridiculous. Uh, flamboyance of flamingos, of course, that's a beautiful one. Yeah, that's and great. Topster says seagulls is a <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Oh, yeah, I it's a flock of seagulls. Like think... Oh, it's a flock of seagulls. Isn't there a band called a flock of seagulls? Of course, there is. Yeah. I run, I run so far away, exactly. Yeah. Get away. I just totally didn't think of that. That's, that'll tell you. How I thought it was like gaggle or squabble or something like a gaggle. Squag squabble sounds about right. They fucking squabble so much, those bastards. Sorry. It's probably a flock of seagulls, though. That's probably. It's a flock of seagulls. It is. Otherwise, the band would have been in a weird, weird place every day. You do realize it's not a flock. It's a flock of seagulls. Okay. Uh, video killed the radio star, Omega fanboy Ian. We all know that. I mean, we, Trevor we come, Horn. 
Trevor Horn, yeah, that's right. The first video ever played on MTV. Mm -hmm. Video killed the radio star. I think number two was Hit Me With Your Best Shot by Pat Benatar. Wow. <laughs> they had like six videos that they had in rotation because people didn't have videos yet. Right, everybody scrambled to make videos. What was the very first rock video ever made? It's listen, it's it's hard to say that. Everyone loves to say it was Bohemian Rhapsody. That's not. But it technically was not. Yeah. Um I have the answer, I think. You, oh, you have the answer. Yeah. Okay, so the very first and this is an actual music video, it was not the a music, live performance. The first music video ever made. First is it a song. British band? Yes. Is it in the early 70s? The, or late 60s, yes. Um, okay, I want to guess this. It's late 60s. Uh, would, or are they a, considered a rock group? Rock pop, yeah. Rock pop. Rock, rock, rock. Rock pop. Rock pop. Uh, it's not the Beatles. No. Uh, is it's it other, like... Is the it, other ones. Rolling Stones. Mm -hmm. Which one? Um, oh. In the late '60s. So, what would that be around? Like, uh, I'll get you, yeah, yeah. And there, there, there's, there, there's loads of uh, soap foam around them. They foamed up a load of soap or shit, and it all, and they're stepping through it and everything. I'm such first. a shitty Stones person. I don't know much about it. Yeah, yeah. What song is it? If it was Peter Gabriel, it would be. He would call it. It's only knock and know all, but I like it. Oh, it's only rock and roll, but I like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just, I don't know what it is. You know, listen, I get the Rolling Stones. I get why they're important, but like, I would never listen to them for pleasure. I just don't. It's music for the bar. It's bar music. Yeah. It's bar you know? music. Play pool, drink beer, enjoy the Stones. That's yeah. the Stones. Right. Great tunes for the bar, man. Fucking sure. Great. I don't sit it. down with headphones and fucking get involved in the stones. The stones is not that. That's not that. That's not Abbey Road. For it's not that. Abbey Road. Shane McGee says uh, five euro ninety nine. Who are the greatest disco artists? Is it the Bee Gees or Bronski Beat? Now Bronski Beat is certainly not one of the greatest. I mean, I don't even know what that's. That's like post romantic. Bronski disco. Beat, by the way, did the Donna Summer. They did. I feel yeah, love. They did, yeah, because Jimmy Somerville sang it. I ran into Jimmy mm -hmm. Somerville in a gay bar in in South London, in a place called the Substation. I was there with uh, Paul and my friend David Bashir, and he, this little tiny guy, he must be five feet tall walks uh -huh. up and he says something rude to Paul because Paul's masculine looking and he obviously was hitting on him. And I went, Oh, you're Jimmy Somerville. And he ran away. <laughs> run away He's so mad run to be away, discovered. Run away, run run away, away. Small town boy. Yeah. That was great shit though. He's amazing. And then he had the communards after that. The communards. Yeah. So who are the greatest disco artists? Well, number one is Donna Bee Summer and the Bee Gees. Well, Donna Summer, yeah. Because the Bee Gees, Bee Gees can't be disco artists because they they were rock. They were Beatlesque pop. They were so many. They did. They dabbled in disco are and excelled. Me? Are you yeah, but they me? weren't a they disco did. band. They oh, weren't. Come on. They're not disco did. artists. They're not. Night fever, you. Joking? I mean, don't get me wrong. A, a genius, all. However, like you know, Fred said, "What well, you? Oh." You know, they had all that other shit back before that, all that Britishy stuff. Robin, yeah. Robin's, Robin sang all those lead vocals with his crazy vocal and he and and then he had that crazy vibrato, you know, message, Massachusetts, you know, and then they stumbled upon, they were, they were going to the studio and they heard boom, boom. And they heard the uh, what was that? Vagina Staying talking. alive. <laughs> You're right. Staying alive. Huh? 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 Yeah, that's amazing. Staying alive. I'd say Donna Summer is the greatest disco artist of all time. Tavares. Uh, who else? I mean, the Bee Gees. You know, they just destroyed everybody. Paul would have to be here because he's the king of disco. He knows all of that shit. There were so many big disco artists. Mm. Who are the biggest disco artists? Let's see, disco. Biggest, did no. I've had popular. some disco stuff. The biggest Dancing disco artist, Chic. There you go. Okay. Casey sure. and the Sunshine Band, the Village People, Pointer Sisters, Sister Sledge, the Tramps, Cool and the Gang. Cool and the Gang. 
Earth, Wind, and Fire. I don't consider them disco either because they were R and B. Uh, Tavares, of course. A Taste of Honey. Oh yeah, that was great. Uh, Taste of Honey. What was their big song? Uh, a boogie oogie oogie. Oh, boogie oogie oogie. Can we dance? <laughs> Amazing shit. David Shire, <laughs> Le Carre, you're crazy. Hey, I didn't give you the, uh, sorry, uh, you, you get this. Not David Shire, but I just want to make sure I got that because uh, I don't want to miss out on giving somebody the gong that they deserve, Shane McGee. Um, Gloria Gaynor, how can we, of how, course, yeah. how can you go near that? And everybody's cut that song and it's like nobody could touch her. Right. I mean, we were on my show the other night. We were talking about um, when somebody owns a song, a, a, a popular song that everybody wants to cover, like everybody in their mother cut "Hallelujah" in recent years. Right? It was uh, wow, obligatory yeah, twenty years ago. Ever, even like John Bon Jovi, like don't do that. You know, and for me, Katie, people love to say it's what's his face, whose voice I find extremely irritating. Uh, Jeff, uh, what's his name? The dead guy drowning in the Mississippi Buckley. River. Jeff Buckley. I find him. I find him incredibly irritating. Um, that song is beautiful. It's very overindulgent. Too, uh, Katie, have Lag you ever heard him live? Like his live. I did see him. I saw him at Slain. Oh God, damn it! It's just too much. Yeah, it was just too whiny. Just so too many way. notes. He, he puts Christina Aguilera oh, to shame. Yeah. Oh my I God, mean, he was stop, stop. melisma for he days. Le Carre <laughs> says uh, Sylvester. Oh geez, do you know who Sylvester was? Look no, him up. No idea. Sylvester was this very, very flamboyant gay drag queen kind of effeminate man boy, and he had a lot of big hits. A lot of big hits. Eric B says Metallica. <laughs> <laughs> it's a band I never got. Never got. Never got them. I get why they're popular. I just don't know why they're that popular. Why they're you too popular? Like they wrote big only. ballads. They wrote nothing else matters, and they yeah, wrote all that. the big yeah. big ballads that people who didn't necessarily care about trash metal could sing along to. Yeah. Did you say trash metal? <laughs> Trash, no thrash, thrash, <laughs> trash man. It's like my mom talking about. Oh, you guys play? What did you? Uh, There's a funny story. Once my my parents never came to gigs, but we once played in the city, and we it was a club gig, and we played at an S and M bar that on Thursday or Friday nights was having rock bands. So my mother comes to this gig because my brother's an asshole. And my br mother, my brother brings my mother to this hitman show and there's like meat racks on the wall and all this. It was a gay S and M club that was doing uh metal on, on weekends or whatever. And my mother yeah. goes, this place is so acid rock. <laughs> Don't even know what that is. And meaning like, it's really heavy. This place looks really hard rock to her. I was acid thinking, of myself, no, this is where gay dudes get tortured for pleasure. I just oh, didn't God. have hard to say it. <laughs> Michael Ford, the most beautiful woman in the world. AI Grace O'Malley. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty close. <laughs> yeah, because all the AI shit I did in the video. <clears throat> she looks beautiful, right, with that auburn hair. I had yeah. to tell AI. It was like, uh, first it was red hair, and then I was like, no, red brown hair. And instead of pumping it. It was perfect. Out. I was on the phone with you when you were making that. It was great. Thomas Burnett asks Sylvester's version of you make me feel or Jimmy's nah, it's, it's Sylvester's even though Jimmy does a great job. It's great. That's a great song too. You know that one, right? You got to sing it. You got to sing you it. You make me feel my oh, yes. right. right, right, right. Got it. Lips got it. incorporated. Funky town. Gonna take you. To oh, dude. Let's talk about how great Rose. You know how many great Rose Royce songs there are? Oh my God. They were, uh, God, you know, th there was a show, a movie called um, Shit. What was it called? Thank God it's Friday. Uh, Rose Royce. I'm going to remember O Y C E. They had one of the greatest songs ever Wishing on a Star. Oh man. And I can't believe nobody's ever cut that Jesus song. Jesus Ray Ray, you're right. Grace Jones. Grace Jones is a fucking goddess. 
Oh dear God, how do we forget Grace? I don't know. Here we, we do adore Grace. her. Though. We love Grace Jones. Oh my God, I saw her in Dublin like five years ago. Trinity She's College, brilliant, right? Oh my God, yeah. but she didn't do. La Vie en Rose? Uh, uh, she did La Vie en Rose. She didn't do Strange. I've seen that face before. She didn't do... Oh! That's like the one I love. Because I love Frantic. I love that film. Polanski oh, yeah. film, you know, and he, he winds up in the late night club. He's looking for his wife. That movie is amazing. Oh, my God. It's, it's, it's a really I'll always love thriller. that film. <laughs> yeah, me too. Love that film. And the beautiful Rolex with the Buckley dial. With the Buckley dial, right? Yeah. yeah. Great. Grace Slick. No. She's you go chasing rabbits in a warren. <laughs> Very small Ohio players. Yeah. I, every once in a while, I'll put on a disco track, and I can't believe it's this. It's not a disco track that you just sang Jefferson Airplane. I know, because somebody just said, I prefaced yeah, it. As, Wayne Grove said Grace Slick, and I was like, that's not disco. That's not disco. No. Jesus. No, no. It's not. On earth. No. Disco. Like, what was the first disco song, though? Does anybody know? It must have been. What's considered the first disco song? I'm sure it's Googleable. What's considered the first disco song you could just write first disco song she's a winner by the intruders by uh, oh rock the boat is considered the first disco song wow rock the boat, rock rock the the boat. boat baby rock the boat don't tip the boat over rock the boat rock the boat i mean who would put that in a pop song now you know who I've been listening to recently? Which is like completely, I don't know how I just missed all their entire catalog. Z the zombies. Oh, like for your love and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, and what's your name? Who's your daddy? daddy. She rich. Is she rich like me? me? And all yeah, it's that, the arrangement in that is fucking crazy. The writing in that band were amazing. It was amazing. Yeah, she's not there. That's a great thing about the man. way she talks about the accent, the color of her Nobody hair. told me about her. Nobody yeah. told me about her, yeah. the way she looks. Yeah, it's yeah. great shit. I've been listening to tons and tons of uh, raspberries lately because, you know, I was a gigantic Eric Carmen fan, and we lost him last week. Oh, 74 sure. died in his sleep. This is a classical prodigy. Was it like the Peabody Institute when he was – like six years old for classical piano and orchestration later conducting and you know mm -hmm. he's the guy that wrote uh, go all the way let's pretend and of course all by myself right which everybody covered but nobody did it as good as he did he's got the Rachmaninoff thing going on in there yeah. he used to in, in, improvise he'd take like bar talk Rachmaninoff Chopin Bach and he would put that into pieces of his songs he would add a little bit of classical fusion into the raspberries uh material but those raspberry songs they have three minutes of pure syrupy pop heaven like wow. Beatley, Beach Boysy, three minutes in and out. And you get a shitload of choruses, great verses, and always the perfect middle eight, which is an art. Having a great middle eight in a song is 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 it's an art because some people just can't do it. What's your favorite bridge of all time? Your favorite middle eight of all time? I don't know. That's a good that's a good do you have one? I do. It's in the partridge family. Which song? I woke up in love this morning. You know that one? I woke up in love this morning. I mm -hmm. woke up in love this morning. Goes, went to sleep with you on my mind. And then the bridge is, do dreams come true? Well, if they do, I have you. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, it's fucking amazing. Oh, that and is all the beautiful. harmony vocals come out, and it's like crazy. Yeah, it's incredible. And that was, you know, Tony Romeo, one of those great 70s golden, you know, tasty cake. Those guys were writing these confectiony songs. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, 
Yeah, I was looking at the raspberries thinking, like, fuck the middle eights on the like, do you know the song Overnight Sensation by by the Rad? Do you are you familiar with the raspberries at all? Or not, Eric Carmen? Not enough. No. Oh man, I'm gonna turn you on to him because you're just okay. gonna just, it's it's musical porn because he's writing pop songs and mm -hmm. rock songs. It rocks hard, like the Beatles did. He's a disciple, obviously a big disciple, but he also picks up like they have a song that uh, he goes, he always introduced it. He goes, This is my love letter to the Who. <laughs> like he wasn't shy to say it you know yeah and they wore their uh influences on their sleeves and he was just brilliant and he wrote all by myself which was a big hit for him and then a big hit for what celine dion later on and a lot of other people if we get up you mean the boy get up get up that's r b my friend that's not disco get up stand up stand up for oh. you right that's oh. reggae isn't it? oh get no, up on it Get, no, up on it. It. get up, get on up, stay on the scene, get on up. That's that's James Brown, James Sex Brown. Machine. Sex Machine, it's not, yeah, that's fucking R&B. I met James Brown. So did I. We nearly played with him. You know our story from Milan, right? Yes, amazing. We were, uh, we were supporting, but it rained during our set. And it was oh, an shit. outdoor show. So we didn't play, and they thought the whole show was going to be canceled, but then it stopped raining, and they cleaned all the water off, and it was time for James. <laughs> but he was backstage. He was really nice. He was just sitting on a step and we were chatting to him. Were you we told, told, though, to refer to him as Mr. Brown? No, we weren't told anything. He just happened to be sitting there. We are just like, fuck. Uh, my sister's friend was his talent agent, Jeff. And uh, Jeff invited me to the show at the Roadstar Loan House. And he, he said, I'm going to introduce you to James Brown, but just refer to him saying, It's a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Brown. Oh, <laughs> I was I like, All right. I mean, he's James Brown. Why wouldn't I do that? And I probably would have naturally done that anyway. Because <laughs> what am I going to do? Like, uh, hi, hey, James. James. Hey, Jimmy. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm not going to do that to James Brown. <laughs> it's like Ray Charles. Would you be like, Hey, Ray? I'd be like, Mr. Charles, Mr. Wonder. <laughs> Mr. Charles, <laughs> that would be ridiculous to do that. Uh, Eric B, best middle eight. What do you think it is? I'm curious because I love middle eights. Oh, you say get up, uh, get up. It's got the best middle eight. There's so many great middle eights. You got to check out the raspberries. You cannot believe because this guy is classically trained, so he's got every chord configuration and, and modulation in his arsenal, you know, because he's so incredibly musical, and that helps. It helps because, you know, a lot of dopey guys will just be like three chord guys. They'll just put their hands on the and maybe they'll hit the jackpot. Maybe they won't. But when you really know your way around the, the circle of fifths, you can certainly, you know, come up with a better idea. Like McCartney's a master of the bridge, as we all know. But the, a great bridge is, a, is I don't even think that Rick Beato had a show on the other night. And he, he was talking about this guy named Jack Harlow who's apparently this very big artist, number one songs galore. And he goes, this is absolute crap. <laughs> because I'm sorry. And it was like, he played the song and it was just out of tune. And I, really, I got to watch that. It was good. Like Rick was mad. I was like, good for you. <laughs> I already know the, the elder O'Malley. Is, it's okay. Radio, it's a great middle bridge. age. Middle oh, the words of the prophet were written in the studio. Oh, hall. sure. Concert hall. Down, I, don't, down, I consider down. that a digression from yeah, the know. song. Echoes with the sound. They the kind of away from the song oh, for a salesman. moment and then they return. Yeah. That's different than a middle eight. A middle eight enhances and raises it up at a new level. It's a different thing. I, I wouldn't consider it a middle eight personally it's true it goes down it's way down there it just switches off in the song and it wanders into a new thing as a thought experiment and then it comes back to the song a that's thought what experiment. I that's what the rush the avid rush fan yeah. will <laughs> analyze it as aaron what is your favorite rush album uh, don't ask a rush fan that ever. i i, I have a definitive favorite rush album which is it is, moving, it get, is, it is no it's not moving picture it's, it's uh, permanent waves Oh, permanent waves. Because they took every, all of they've learned from, mm -hmm. you know, Crest of Steel to 2112 to Farewell to King's Tapestries. And then they just went whick, and they figured out how to take those elements of excitement and musicality and squish them into not 20 minute songs. 
Like Natural Science is by far my favorite Rush song, hands down. Wow. Jesus. And Jacob's Ladder and fucking Entree New. Entree New. Fuck. I love that album. I think it's perfect. And my second Signals, favorite is Signals. I I be I I, that's, I that might be one of my favorites too. Wow. Well, yeah. I I, I, I can't pick a favorite, but do you know that that's the album that I checked out on? Signals is when yeah. you checked out. That's when I checked out. I checked Jesus out for a couple Christ. of records. No, no, after that, I love Signals. After that, after Signals, I you checked out a Permanent Waves. No, I checked out for waves. Grace Under Pressure. Oh, Grace Under Pressure. Sorry. Yeah. Um, Grace Under Pressure is one of my favorite. Grace albums. Under Pressure, hold your uh, per, uh, yeah. power windows, hold your fire. No, I ignored them completely. One didn't go favorite. to see them on those tours. I saw them in for uh, moving pictures and signals. I saw them like five nights moving pictures. I saw them about three or four nights on signals. No, I love signals. Marathon. Uh, I love uh, fucking a countdown. Oh, Marathon's God. not a sig uh, signals, is it? No. Countdown. Hold your fire. Oh, maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 subdivision. Digital man, uh, Digital, losing uh, it. One of my yeah, favorite yeah, rush songs yeah, of all yeah. time. Losing it. The dancer yeah. slows her frantic pace with pain and desperation. Her aching limbs and downcast face aglow with perspiration. It's about, and it's exactly what Neil Peart thought at the end of his career. He didn't want to become the aging ballerina who no longer had it imagine what was going through his mind as he was as his final days or uh, or his final months thinking shit here i am i'd love to know if he did any writings or anything like that you know those or if he could put pen to paper maybe he had problems with that. apparently he was very good until the end because neil and uh alex and getty have both said so my question is this and i thought for sure you know, it's amazing how somebody with a brain that big, that brilliant, the cancer was in his brain. Like his brain attacked itself. Yeah, it's like Chris, Christopher Hitchens got throat cancer. Yeah. The very this, thing that he used as his yeah. weapon against people. It was, yeah, a lot of religious fanatics thought, ah, it serves you right, you know. It's like that's your karma now for speaking against God and so on, which is pretty gross. Mm. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Power Windows. Thank you, Aaron. Sorry, I couldn't think. Yeah, it's, it's on Power it's Windows, right? Power I, I now like those records. I didn't. I love before. Power. I, I do now. They're just. Uh, I mean, I think out of all the three of those records, that maybe Grace Under Pressure has got the best songs. Maybe. Uh, however, what I was thinking was. Neil Peart, you would think that that guy would have written everything down during his journey through glioblastoma. That's what I'm thinking he may have done. Yeah. And it's not, maybe it's yet to be published or something. You know, there might be some announcement. Uh, or maybe he couldn't finish it or whatever, you know. Well, even better, like during, like, you would think Neil, because I've read all his books his journeys he's a travelogger he's a documenter the yeah. way he he i mean he he he'd be driving down the road in his bmw uh, on his bmw motorcycle and he would take 10 minutes to describe the foliage cuz he was such an observant human you would think that he would want to document what he was going through maybe he, he did the opposite i don't know may he may have done it we we may never know. It may be there. Eric or, B says, we have assumed control. We have assumed control. <laughs> Attention all planets of the Solar Federation. Rush fans, man. It's Apparently we have 145 trip. Rush fans because we've been talking about Rush for 10 minutes and they haven't logged off. No one hasn't logged God help them. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, what's your favorite Rush album? You have to have a favorite. If you have and to he, pick one, and he keeps going with the Rush. I don't okay, know. I don't have a favorite. I said it, but I mean, Signals, Signals. is up there. Grace Under Pressure is up there. That's a very they're interesting all, album they're to all pick up as your there. favorite. They're all up there. I love them all on. for different reasons. I mean, I one is, I, I, is don't ask me which one is. Don't ask me. Listen, you only get to pick one Kate Bush record. Which one is it? <clears throat> Hounds of Love. Is it Hounds of Love? Me, a sensual world for sure. It just destroys me because, but then again, moments of pleasures on the red shoes, and I couldn't live without that song. 
So then, stop picking favorites. I hate superlative questions like that. I love. Oh, what's your What's the one moment you remember? I fuck. I don't know. I can. Ne- I can never answer a question. I get it with the watch. Well, and here's a question that doesn't have, have to do with superlatives. Oh, what do you think was their greatest musical achievement? Who's Rush? Like, how, like if you were one of those guys, man, which one would you think that they decide they knew that that was where they really got it together? That's what I think it's permanent waves because they figured out to condense it all into kind of the more. same question. I can't answer it. Sorry, I refuse. I refuse to answer it. What's your favorite Motley Crue album? <laughs> None of them. <laughs> Brand new lovers is Molly Crew too fast for love. Do you know what I have? I have that on leather records on my shelf here, and you know what? I, I'm open to selling it because I couldn't care less. My friend Ricky made me buy it. It's worth thousands of dollars. It's one of those bands that put out a record independently on their own label, and my friend Ricky made me buy it. And I was like, I, I, I don't like this music. It's there you stupid. go. There's a good answer from Aaron. What's their greatest achievement? Making own cool cool. That's very true. That's very uh, true. There's a good answer. Aaron, which do you think was Neil's coolest set? Drum set. Oh, Jesus. Watch our audience just disappear. Now we're going to have 16. We just got left. four more people in the room. It was one thirty. They're, they're coming ago. over, going. What's happening over here? Is there anything interesting? Oh, who cares? <laughs> All right, fair enough. Everybody's loving. Enjoy it. your wine. It's, it's a, I'm, I suppose it doesn't. Listen, matter. I killed half the bottle already. Really? Yeah. Wow, you were going for it. You know, is it good? Oh man, it's oh, good. Man. Barolo, is it? Oh man, when the Barolo's good, it's, it's DOCG, good. man. All, always, it has to be. Does it have to be? I've seen DOC. No, not from Barolo. It's impossible. No? That region is only DOCG. Look at the it's fucking the region. divot in this. It's so deep. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> it has yeah. to be DOC. Everything that comes out of that area is DOCG. It has to be. It's, a, it's qualified for that. Vaughn, don't make us ban you from the room. <laughs> I told everybody my poison. Vaughn, did you buy the watch? Were you the Vaughn that my ship Vaughn. shipper? <laughs> the shipper. Did like, he say Vaughn? Yeah, he goes, uh, what's this Vaughn? Did you ship to him before? I'm like, what's Vaughn? What are you talking about? He shows me a thing. I was like, no, Vaughn, Vaughn, Vaughn. Uh, yeah, to ship out the watches. Although I just got an email from fucking uh, UPS. I think they're pissed off. I shipped out a bunch of watches at the same time. I think I have to send some sort of of invoice thing. What? I think I'm in trouble. Yeah. And I saw there was a missed call from my boy at the shipper, at the shipping center. I was at dinner. Damn. Trouble, trouble in paradise. Eric B says, getting a good tone out of that Ricky bass of Getty's is their best achievement. Best what achievement. Do you, what do you think about that? I mean, it's some of the greatest bass sounds of all time. There goes the, the, the extra viewers. And that's the bass. No, that's actually not the bass. No, because it has the older. toaster. It's older. Oh, don't make me. Don't Dude, she's in good hands. Yeah, I know. I know. I took good care of her. I took her to. Yeah. I took her to get to get all sorted. Dude, out. there's no other place I'd rather it be than there. Trust me. <laughs> that base has seen so much in its life. God damn. I even have the, the completely detuned. You know. Oh, okay, great. Just, no so does, there's no stress on her neck. Fantastic, thank you. Because uh, I put flats on there because I'm just a flat queen. Oh, they're flats, wow. I put flats. I like flat. I like the way flats feel. I know you're a Chris Squire guy. I just love the way flats sound. I don't know what it is about flats. Now we drop. We just dropped eight because I was like, we're talking about gauges and strings. <laughs> Selena, hello, happy Friday, cheers to you, love. Here Half you of go. them are listening to us, going, "What the hell are they talking I about?" Know, but, you know, I've I now have a buzz, and you have a buzz. So let's have a you buzz have together. A bu- let's have a buzz together. <laughs> this is like actually the happiest I've 
I've I've felt in uh, a couple of days. I mean, oh well, that's good. I'm happy about that. Hey, it's sometimes been... a good old drink. Shit. Hey, listen, what the, the best parts of the Bible is is the the drinking is, is the Cana, right? The the story of Cana, right? The story of Cana where they all get fucking drunk. That's sure. the best parts of the Bible. Or hey, sodomized. The uh, the vino is a beautiful thing. We love it. I went to a dark place this week. Yes, Eric B. is a four thousand one. It's a nineteen seventy three four thousand one. Yeah, it's got the it's got the toaster toaster pickups in it, which Getty never. Nineteen seventy three built in September nineteen seventy three, when I was born. Same Shane exact McGee. Age. Do either of you know the Elvis Presley song "Long Black Limousine"? The Wall of Black Ocean. I do <laughs> not know that, but we love the Wall of Black that because of that nice uh and then right underneath it is <laughs> Celine says triangle is the best everybody loves a triangle Dirk update on your landlords did these sprint now I have I actually have to go to court with her on April Monday. 1st no not this Monday Monday we're having an inspection by the uh by the housing division because basically I called everybody and their mother and they're scared shitless and they should be because they are She's up to no good. Listen, it's a spurious kind of bullshit thing she's doing. Uh, the, the 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 impetus of her lawsuit is something that was already dismissed. So she's gonna uh, let, let her spend her money. Let her keep spending her money. But I've got a, an amazing lawyer right now who is working on the case, and he said the following. Well, actually, I'm not going to say it in public. But anyway, it's good. Well, her lawyer, her lawyer will be there, but she won't be there, right? She won't be there, but her lawyer loves to take her money because he said to me, I love taking her money. This is the guy with the nice watch, right? Yes, he did. He was wearing Cartier. Yeah, you guys yeah. got talking. That's I mean, I just, thing. I couldn't, I couldn't resist. We we're walking every time out of the you're, yeah, every time you're in the court, I always say it like, if you, they usually they spot you. They're like, all right, you know, Mr. Amalia. And you're like, hey, that's me. And, they want to step out into the hallway and say, okay, what are we doing here? This is the complaint. Are we going, are we fighting? What are we settling? What, what are you going to offer? Cause you know, and usually they're just good lads ready to work. You get into a conversation and you're saying, ah, you know, and it's no big war. It's all friendly. It's, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, so no, every, every time I went up, guy, but he's a lawyer courtroom. and he's working for her. I he's get working it. for her, and you just go, listen, this is my situation. You know, this is what we're gonna do. This is what I'm, gonna... and he might be like, oh, okay, yeah, all right, I'll go back to you know, I'll go back to her and she fucking settle with this. You know, yeah. they just want to get it out because they're heading off to another courtroom. They have to do sixteen a day, and that's how they pay their rent. That's how they. He's from Staten yeah. Island. Eddie, I didn't want to make sure you got the gong. Um, he, I mean, his office is in Staten Island, yeah, you know, so just like you'll be fine, just go along as usual. Oh, no, 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 I'm Sit fine there, yeah. Topes just says it right, she just wants you out so she can slap some paint and four times the rent. Topes, the entire reason, Topes. This is, I mean, we're in an agreement some of the time. Do you right know what Topes is up one, against right now? 100% in agreement. Topster nailed it. Oh, I know. Do you What's know Topster got an AD call to today? Oh, for what? A uh, Rolex AD? Guinness. Oh, take it, take it, take it. Yeah. Topster, we if you all, have the money, to take it. charge it on the card, do whatever you have to do, take it. Yeah. He's like, it's You're not going to lose a dime. You're not going to lose a dime on that no. watch. You're already way up on the watch. What did they go for? Let me check what they go he, for. He, 18 in, clear. With tax, they offered it to him. I sold him for That's 22. What they go. 19 so to 22. Up. Yeah. Let me check Chrono. Mm. I know Chrono is a bit pumped, but whatever. <laughs> Tobes just says, I'm probably going to do it. He said to let him know by tomorrow. You know what? Just do it. Because you're not going to lose money. You're not. That's not going to happen. And it's tax season. Just think about like you know what you're getting back. And just apply it to that and just use that as your reasoning. I don't know if you're married or not. Just keep that quiet. <laughs> well, don't ask permission. Just ask for forgiveness. That's the best Correct. way to do it, right? Yeah. yeah, it's in euros. We're over 21. So you're 22. That's 21. So he's getting it for 80. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's dollars. That's 21.35. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
he's getting it free. You're not going to lose on this watch. So just shift money. It's just shifting. You've already assets. made thirty three hundred dollars. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, I said I even if like it. down right if like down the pike Worst like a photo, couple of okay, days and you need to get rid of it. Fucking who cares? You make yeah. a couple of bucks off of it. Fuck it. Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? I mean, if you have the cash to put aside, take it. And if you wear it and you're a little, you know, just be careful, baby it if you need to. But uh, I mean, this this watch isn't going anywhere. This is that watch. It was gorgeous. just released last year. It's not, you know, this is good. I would take it. You'd want that. I would wear that. Yeah. That's the sexiest. It's fuck. a really bad photo of it, but it's a terrible photo. Go get a great photo of it. Yeah, it's yeah. much richer than that. It's the GRNR. That's what I was yeah. looking for. I forgot which. It which, was uh, it was nineteen five on uh, Collectors nineteen forty six. I took everybody to Collectors. Mm -hmm. Oh God! You shouldn't advertise that place. Well, yeah. well, who cares? <laughs> Well, lots of you lose. Oh no, this is a copy. That's a copy. I'm so sorry. Never mind. Anyway, we know what it is. It's a beautiful fucking piece. Jesus, take it. And I mean, and that thing in solid gold. Oh dear God, that's. Do they make that watch in solid gold? In solid. They With don't. The, the jubilee in solid. Can you bring that up? Can you? Can yeah, you, I'll, I'll, I want to see make that. A, I'll make a better effort this time. I'm sorry, guys. It's late here. I'm fucking. Been a long fucking day. Uh, so the GRNR, so it would be the one eight, right? Now what the one three? There's the one eight. Let me get a nice photo of it here. If I can find one. Hey, I'll just go on the goddamn website. How about that? About the real website. Go build it. Go build that watch. If you I build it, it, they will come. They will come. Here it is. Come on. Come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on, I need you. Come on, I love it. Come on. That's... Go all the way. You know how many other watches have That's the full, full gold jubilee? I've Zero. never seen a full gold jubilee Zero. like that. Zero. I mean, years Is that the ago, only yes. one? Now in the current catalog, yeah. You can get solid gold, of course, in the day day, which is a totally different thing. Sure, sure, sure. Solid gold. I mean, you can't get that on the Pepsi or the Batman or they're all steel watches. Look at that thing. But anyway, he's. Uh, I don't mean to bring it, bring us elsewhere here. Uh, he's looking at the Guinness, right? So it's the, which is such a great name for this watch. Yeah. And there it is. It's the first one that comes up. Sorry, not there. Oh. Not that. Never mind. And there's my watch. We love that. And where is she? Where is she? Okay, let's build it then. If you build it. They will come. Such a shitty website. Look how slow it is. Like that's a thing at all. Okay. Start. <laughs> Michaela just chat to you. Hey, gorgeous. Both of your color schemes, as in your backgrounds, outfits, etc., match so well and look great. You fashion maven, you beautiful thing. Is that Everybody, a fact? She just <laughs> we match, we match up. You know what? I'm looking She's that got way. The You're eye. looking She's that way. She's got the eye. I, I, I told her to come on to, to spit fire at the haters of Kate Middleton. Oh. She was in my chat as well, saying, you know, fuck those assholes. Cuts there is the Guinness. The, yeah, there it is. Thank you, Michaela. We you can you. see why, why it's called the Guinness. It has Guinness looks, baby. She sent me a funny picture today on Instagram. She goes, is this you? And it was like, it did look vaguely like me, but it wasn't. She goes, is All this right. you? I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> really? I'll go find it. It was really scary. I was like, I was like, I looked at it. I was like, did somebody do like a weird Photoshop? That happened to me ages ago with, with, with that famous photo of, you know, David Bowie and everybody at Live Aid. And they're like, is this you in the picture? Have you ever seen, you've seen that picture, right? Yes. You've, you've seen it. I <laughs> swear it was fucking me. It was actually George Michael. It doesn't look like him at all, actually. But it's him in the picture. And people are like, is this you standing with the 
on the crown from like, Live Aid. No. They I'm did like, look yeah. like Yeah. <laughs> Michaela, where'd you send that? Where did you send that to? Because I'm looking. It's now that I've got like Patreon and Instagram. It's so hard to like remember where stuff was. Oh man, welcome to my club. <sighs> Dude, I get really important stuff and I'm like, uh, oh, it's text. It was a text. It was text. She texted. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Michaela. You guys are like uh, friend, friendoids. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I'm jealous. I'm jealous. Don't be jealous. Uh, where are you? There she is. She's like, is this your doppelganger? Yeah, I'm going to put it up. <laughs> Let's see. It. It's hilarious. Meanwhile, I'll see if I can find that photo of me. I can't, uh, not me, but you'll laugh your ass off. I can't blow this up, though. Oh, I dude, that kind of is you-ish. A little bit. Oh, dang. You're showing a lot of other text there dude that's no, i don't care stuff. i don't okay. there's no no real things okay. it's my sister it's my vet okay all right i mean the only he's got the two two striations on his face like i have when i grimace uh i i don't ever let my beard get big and long and gray like that and uh uh yeah i mean yeah i could see it though it's funny though he looks angry that dude yeah he looks mean he looks like he eats meat Right, that's I the meat, meeting eating version of you. There yeah, you go. That's the answer. I know. Okay, I found the photo. Oh, okay. I can. I think I can share it. Can I? Do it. Thanks, Jesus. Michaela. You crack me up. You, you psycho bitch. <laughs> She's fucking. She's a genius. I cannot wait for her to rule the world because she's going to. Yeah. Because she can't be that smart. And that beautiful and not like rule the world. It's going to happen. It's like what you always say. If you were a hot girl, you would rule the world. <laughs> Dirk. Like you would have all the powers at your hands. Eddie just gave us 20 bucks. You guys probably know this, but the Rolex green crystal on your Millie does not have a patent or a patent if you're English because Rolex does not want anybody knowing how they made it. Right. You, so you can copy it, but apparently it's totally mystery to Rolex. Yes, we did know that. And it's crazy because I have a green screen that you can't see my green, beautiful. But you know what you get for that 20 bucks? You get Leonard Bernstein. And you know what? He only, he tried to hit on me when I was like 15 years old because I got to go to the children's the, the children's chorus concert in his apartment because Marty Lawrence, my teacher, took me there. And I wished I was smart enough to have sex with him, but I didn't. Can I just say that? You just did. So you, I mean, I was already, I, was, I had already like macked on a couple of much older fellas before, but he scared the shit out of me because he was very quick. He kind of chased around the Busendorfer. <laughs> It was kind of a little, psh, psh, psh. but anyway, I have this photo with its low resolution. What's the name of uh, what's the Dublin guy who behind Live Aid again? The name is gone Bob Geldof. Bob Geldof, uh, because I'm sure I can find it. And I fucking found it and it comes straight up. Oh, Jesus Christ, there's a high definition version. It's so oh, bad. Okay, okay, I need to share it over. I'll share it. This is so fucking terrible. Oh, man. Okay, so apparently I'm in this photo. Can you see? Do you want me to zoom in? Yeah. Uh, well, zoom in on Bowie a, on and a... Bob at Bald. Yeah, that's okay. a great picture. She, what a mess she was. Can you see me? Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> Is that George Michael? It's George Michael. Yeah. Oh wow! I've never thought of you as looking like George Michael, but I get it here. I was in uh, the Hard Rock Cafe the other day, and they were like, you do look like for George Rock, because he was on, you know, Baby, I'm your man, you know that song, I'm your man? Sure, I know everything. In the video, I, I was looking at it going, oh, now I see it. So, guys, can you spot me? <laughs> there I am. <laughs> so weird. I'm looking at it going, kind of is. It's, you now, know, This is after like? she already left Michael Hutchins, right? 
uh, well, you're talking about this broad with the yeah, Polly Yates. Polly yeah. Yates. Yeah. She already had Tiger Lily, their kid, and Bob Geldof raised her. Yeah. Now let's. Can we name everybody? I mean, on the top, I can see it's uh, Simon Le Bon and. Uh, and okay, so uh, now go from the left, top left. Don't know. I don't know who is. that is. Next to him, I don't know who that is. The, the next is Tony. Tony, Tony Hadley from Tony Spandau. Hadley, the then, loveliest guy ever. Yeah. Then uh, and John from Duran. Yeah. Then John Taylor. Then John Simon. Taylor, Simon, and then. Uh, What's his name? It's the other. Is that not the other half of Wham? That's not uh, Andrew Ridgely. No, no, that's not no, right. no, Andrew. definitely not. Definitely not. Okay. Then it's me. Then George. Yeah. Then you. Me with a tan. Okay. Uh -huh. Me in a few months. Then uh, one of those cons from from Tony Hadley Hadley's band. Oh, he's one of the he's one of the Crays. Cray. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not Cray. Yeah. yeah. No. The, they were in the movie The Crays. The two. Oh yeah, yeah. But not Cray. Yeah. No. Then One that's the, the guy from ABC, right? The singer from ABC, or from Alf? Uh, maybe it's from ABC. Yeah. yeah, the dude with the top hat. I don't know. Me neither. The kid. I don't know. No, but I, oh, that's Miles Kingston, the the boy tenor. Oh, okay. From Andrew Lloyd Webber's Requiem. Okay, then obviously Bowie, Bob Bowie. Geldof, Bo Polly Yates. Then who's on the left of Polly Yates? Um, is that not what's his face from Status Quo? Jesus, I don't know. And then Midjure with a Scottish kilt on. Yeah, Midjure, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course, Midjure. And I, I was oh, there, and yeah. apparently I'm immortal. I mean, I don't think you look anything like George Michael, but there, it's frightening. <laughs> it's fucking scary. Right there is extremely scary. I don't know what to say. Oh my god. It's the it's the squabble of Gabby Martin Adler. Kemp, yeah, Kemp. Martin Kemp. Yeah. the Kemp brothers, those fuckers. The Kemp's, yeah, Martin. Yeah, Kemp. because I spoke to, uh, you know, I didn't. It was Lydia's mom spoke to Tony Hadley. We were in uh, in Milan. No, we were in. Uh, oh shit, we we were doing that fucking big music festival here in Italy a thousand years ago. And he was backstage. He was he was singing that night, and he couldn't sing any Spando ballet. He did actually uh, save it for the morning after the fucking Duran Duran and other songs. He was singing other people's songs. Tony Hadley. Tony Hadley. I love and we, Tony And Hadley. backstage, he was like, "I can't sing any any Spando ballet because Why? the Kemp, because the Kemp's wrote it, and they won't allow me." And <laughs> and Lydia's mom got talking to Tony Hadley's wife. And they were all about like how disgraceful it is and so on. The two of them hit it off. And next thing I'm, I'm like backstage, I'm like, is that? I'm not going to say it. Chew! I bought a chicken I'm to like, the world. She's talking to Tony. Tony. Yeah, right. Yeah. And then you come back again. Dun, 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 dun. What I find it hard to write the next line. Oh, I want the truth to be said. And that's for the dragon lady next door. Fuck her. Do, 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 do. I know that my favorite lyric on that and that is with a with a is. with a with a thrill in my hand and a pill on my tongue or something. Yeah, it's a great, great. And a pill on my tongue. It's great. I love that shit. Anyway, he was the sweetest dude, and yeah, I remember he's a thinking, big fuck, right? A big, big tall guy. A big presence, yeah. and lovely guy, and his wife was like, "Yeah, he can't sing any of the fucking songs from Spandau Ballet." Oh, uh, so he has to go now out and I do know. covers. He has to go out and do covers because of, of the Kemp pricks. That because they're possessive. Cunts. The Kemp cunts. The Kemp cunts. Wow, Martin cunt. Yes. Wow. No. So it's them. Those guys became a little Kemp industry where they, yeah, did, they did the craze and they did all this stuff. They did. So, they, so, they fucking acted in movies and stuff. They show yeah. up as like character actors in movies and stuff. They're like fucking parasites. They've got no actual talent of their own except for their lyric writing and their, you know, they were pretty good. But they wanted to be stars and they hired Tony to sing their song. And Tony had these amazing. And his wife is a genius. She's Pepsi and Shirley. Fucking. Uh, from Wham. Wham. Oh, 
He's married to Shirley, 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 oh, Shirley Holliman from Pepsi and Shirley. You know, Wham's two background singers, Jitterbug. Yeah. Jitterbug. That's Pepsi and Shirley, and she's Shirley. And she it was George's one of his best gal pals ever. Oh, you know, because wow. every gay dude needs a great gal pal. Sure. Fag hag. Yeah. Well, you know. We don't like to say that, but you know. What, is it, what you're getting offended now? Don't get offended. I don't get offended, thing. but like maybe they would. You know, I don't get offended by I any know of that women shit. who love until my that landlord thing. calls me a faggot. That's the only well, thing. Fuck her. Me. I mean, you didn't use it as a weapon. That was offensive. It's you know, like if it said like you nasty queen or you dirty fag, that's fine. But when like somebody says it with hate, it's completely. Yeah, but it's different. okay like, for a girl. Like imagine if like hag, imagine but... if somebody came up to you like in the street and said. Listen, you fucking dirty mick. I hear you know it all mean? the time and I don't care. I'm like, no, filthy no, scruffy. If somebody mick, came after mick. listen, that's no. usually somebody who wants to sleep with the dirty mick. That's right. That's different. <laughs> it's different. Because they're having a <laughs> fantasy about, about, about dirty mick. But when somebody it listen, epithet, any of that kind of language, when said with vitriol, when said with I didn't hatred. say it with vitriol. No, 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 you didn't. But I'm just saying. Listen, I, I couldn't. In, I couldn't it, care less. As a term of endearment. All right, of women. Course. Yes. Oh, who but love? It's like, yeah, we never use the c word against women, do we? Ever? It's always Ever. men. Yeah, yeah. He's no, a dirty true. cunt. You know what I don't like about him? He's a cunt. <laughs> right. I've never said that. I've never used that word about a woman, ever. But in, in uh, what I'm saying, really, in essence, is yes, every gay man ha needs to have a great female friend, but also the opposite. Every woman in the world, straight woman, married, whatever, needs a gay man in their life. I think, sure, because he's the fucking best advice. He's the best. He's the best complimenter, and so he will say, "Honey, you look great tonight," or you look shit tonight, go back and do your lipstick again. And she won't get offended. She'll be fucking like, thanks for that advice. It, it's just the best person to have around. Mm -hmm. And it's not the hubby. And it's not some asshole. And it's not some competitive bitch trying to fucking cut her down. Going, oh, you'd look great if you lost a few pounds or whatever. It's cow. a cow. <laughs> do you know what I mean? That's what I'm trying yeah. to say. Right. I'm to... waving a white flag here. I no, 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 no. I'm just trying to get to, like, I don't mind. I could, I'm not, I am nonplussed by all language until I know it's said with hatred. You sure, I mean? sure. That's sure. it. Wavs is jerk. Thank you, Shane Michi. I'm just a little bit drunk. And, and I love Tony Hadley. I'm one of those metal guys that loves guys like Tony Hadley. You know what I mean? I fucking my one of my favorite because, albums in the history of you know, music. Time when I was a kid, Tony oh. Hadley was the sound of the radio for me growing up in Ireland. I know you hate superlatives. I know you do. Ash. Oh, sure. However, what's my favorite? We both no 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 no. We both <laughs> think "Listen Without Prejudice" is a masterpiece, don't we? Yes, but I've never sat down and listened to it on headphones. Do you know what I mean? Have you not? No. Oh my That's god. That's the cover with all the crowd, the live crowd, right? That's with the beach. It, it was May. It was, I was on it the was, beach. It, it was a beach crowd. in Coney Island and it was shot. It's a it's he co-opted that picture. It yes. was a famous uh photographer in, in America named Ouija. And it you know, was shot in 1940. The problem, the problem is that it has did in and in and in and in. You don't love that song? No. When we used to play it as a band, where we play it at weddings. And I know stuff. I sang Remember, a few. I sang it at, money. At, uh, at and to me, to me, it's a, just a super benign, average, nah, it's a pedestrian song. Freedom ninety. Freedom ninety. That's Talk about one of the greatest song. bridges ever. When it looks like the road to heaven, but it feels like the road to hell. When I knew which side my bread was buttered, I took the knife as well. The bass playing is really good on that part. And he plays bass it. on that track. It's not Dean Estes, it's him, it's George. It's all chromatic. It's amazing. It's entirely chromatic. It did it. Because the, the song is in the key of C. By the way, the song is in the key of C. Never put a rock song in the key of C ever in your life. 
because it's just wrong. Don't put the. It's, it's it wrong. should be A or E. E. <laughs> of course. <laughs> or fucking F sharp. Whatever you want. But no, F sharp. E. Only e. Rush. No. Do, 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 it's do, all do, rock do, songs do, are A or E. Do, do, do. No, it's great bass playing in that song. Listen, I used to play with Joy with the band because I'd be like, I'm going to have fun on the bass. But for me, the song is like, you know. Dude, that album, do yourself a favor. It has other songs that are great. Jesus. Praying for, no, that's later. This is Praying for Time. Praying for Time. Freedom 90, Cowboys and Angels. That's right. My favorite song on the record is called Something to Save. Fucking killer. Okay. Uh, I mean, Mother's I need to Pride. get back in and listen to it. Yeah. I mean, not only that, but the sonically with headphones on and the vocals, he's the most soulful, beautiful singer. Oh, my God. <laughs> Genius. That album. And then he does a version of Stevie Wonder's They Won't Go When I Go, and you cannot believe the vocal on it. It is just, he does this thing. There's an end of the song, and I, I'm not going to do it because there's no point because you need reverb and stuff. It goes, uh, Stevie Wonder goes, um, my destiny. It's got this glissando at the end that George just does so masterfully that destroys <laughs> your, your soul. Burning. I know it's clipping galore, right? <laughs> I have to What's admit you? it to you now, though. Here's the truth. It wasn't him. It was me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That's just funny. You're getting drunk. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that was great fun. <laughs> uh, best wingman I've ever had was a lesbian. She's like, <laughs> see that pussy. <laughs> Michaela, one of my fashion gay customers, told me that is super attractive mean looking husband told him he thinks i'm beautiful and loves me it was the best compliment i received and so we long. love the mean looking guys what is that no about? there was a there was a guy a guy who watches the channel was a friend of mine actually who said to me that he's like when michaela started appearing on the channel or no it was on the fashion police he goes where did you find her it's like staring at the sun Ooh, that was powerful, right? Wow. <laughs> That's a great U2 song, by the way. Staring at the sun. That's on my favorite U2 record, the, the most derided ever U2 record, Pop. Octum, baby. No, no pop. It's pop. No, it's Pop. Yeah. Uh, that's very interesting. That's an interesting uh, uh, quote, though, Michaela, because what is it about guys that are so ruthless and mean and scary that are more attractive to people than not like the nice guys are boring Why is you know that? i was i posted a thing on my instagram the other day sadia who i'm obsessed with right sadia sadia psychology uh, that woman is just <laughs> haunts my dreams uh but she's brilliant and she said a thing about ch- women who cheat men who cheat is a different thing men can be forgiven by their woman in fact they need they need to be forgiven but women who cheat shouldn't be forgiven by their by uh by the, uh w- by their man because even if they beg and beg they shouldn't be forgiven because she says and this was just cut me into i was like oh my god it's so true she goes because the truth is we don't want the guy back we don't want the guy who forgives us back we Ooh. want an alpha male and an alpha male will not accept infidelity we want the guy who goes you know what darling we had a good run and best of luck, but you know, you fucked it up. But best of luck to you and moves on because that's the man we respect. We don't respect the man who forgives us. That's Sadia. I'm super obsessed with that woman. That's really fucked up, though. Yeah, I know. She's dark. She's dark, man, which is even better. I think the most amazing thing about, because uh, I truly believe that pe- human beings are in- incapable of fidelity. I think that uh, you should, if you're in a long term relationship, if you're in a relationship, you should allow the. Po- what happened? Where'd you go? Uh, you should allow the possibility of that happening, and you shouldn't be jealous because it's very egotistical. I'm still here. I'm still here. I yeah, just put it on full screen. It's very egotistical to think that you should be enough for any one person. However, uh, mm-hmm. that's not how I roll. 
but I think it should be permissible. Can you hear the volume? To have the same yeah, problem. she's ridiculous. They are all tending to have a woman that's disrespectful, a woman that may be unfaithful, or a woman that may be using them financially. Now, if this seems to be the problem you're facing, and if this seems to be a reoccurring theme with all the women that you date, they seem to be, you always find yourself getting cheated on, you always find yourself getting used, you always find yourself getting disrespected. I'm going to give you the reasons why this is happening to you, and then how to prevent this from reoccurring. Look at that one. <laughs> not even funny. It's not. She's a super bang. That's harmful to the male species. But she's a she's incredibly precise and intelligent and everything she talks about. It's one of these self help channels. It's it's kind of stupid, you know. But uh, her yeah. hair. Is her, unbelievable. Was, what is that made of? Gossamer? Don't give me fun. One thing I would say to men is when a woman's fighting um fighting with you, she's actually fighting for you. You should be worried when she stops caring. Yeah. One thing I would say to men is Okay, it's just short. But anyway, yeah. Oof. Sweet two zero nine says cuckold. Well, that's what he means, obviously. Well, cuckold is diff that's well, that's darker. <laughs> <laughs> that's that the darkest dark. thing that is something that i would never ever that's, that's some really dark shit you have i don't to think really she talks be... about that so i think she's giving wholesome you know advice to mostly men i think she kind of she got a lot of subs after i think she did a discussion with uh andrew tate andrew tate made a lot of people famous he made fucking just pearly things famous as well which is a disgrace what happened to your video? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm just doing some stuff right now. Okay. She did a long interview on Soft White Underbelly. Do you ever watch that? I watch it all the time, mm. actually. Is it good? Soft White Underbelly is a YouTube channel where this guy interviews like hookers and drug addicts and homeless people and all kinds of mm -hmm. people that are like on their way down or on their way up. And it's a fascinating expose on people's lives. And there's oh, like a guy that. on there that I know. And I knew him because he worked at Limelight because he used to work all the shows we used to do. Mm -hmm. And he apparently was a severe drug addict. And I never, he's a big strapping fucking ride. And I couldn't believe it. And I started, I got hooked on that channel. Oh, this is the one where she's wearing, oh, she's all in green in this. This is, it's beautifully shot. This is the one. I've seen clips of this. Wow. Okay. Jeez. I need to watch this. Absolutely yeah. breathtaking. Give me a break. Stop it. Stop it. Just stop it now. Jeez. I'm all into brunettes these days. What's happening? Am I changing? Oh, well, you know, I mean, taste change, you know, yeah. depends upon the, the, the subject. I suppose. Yeah. I mean, I switch know. to Aubrey Piguet and brunettes. <laughs> And brunettes, yeah, you did. You switched to you are a big AP fan now. Uh huh. That happens. How's your uh, mind going down? Are you all right? I, yeah, yeah, I'm grand. <laughs> He's grand. I'm, I'm, I, I'm two thirds of the way through the bottle. I want to quit this this stream like 45 minutes ago, but you were getting a little drunk and singing. <laughs> I'm like, this is too good. <laughs> this is I can't, I can't deprive the people left. The this is the most fun I've had since since the fucking AF, AF AL, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh Toussaint Lou says the interviewees are so honest, it's amazing to watch. If you if you will get addicted to that channel. I'm so I'm subscribing immediately. That's uh, a huge I'm audience. My God. How do I not know about this? Believe me, this is not me. I haven't been pissed drunk. Um, I have a nice buzz going on for sure. Uh, Dirk hasn't been pissed drunk in ages. Emma said you were you were fairly well on when he was in town. Well, that was the day that Laverne left us. So like, yeah, yeah. I, I did my best to try to fucking numb the pain. That's good. And I just went straight to, to bed. Don't stop. You're keeping me entertained. <laughs> So this has had some fun. I'm having a little bit of fun. Hey, listen, with I'm with my best mate, and I'm with uh, all of the bashery. Uh, the bashery keeps Hab me going. Habashery, now. isn't a habashery a, like a, a stop for travelers? 
I don't know, a haberdasher is like haberdashery. That's where you go for a fine men's couture. We should do a hab 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 haberash. No, it's not going to work. I tried. Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Andrew gives us two Canadian dollars. Great night, fellas. Thanks for being yourselves. Let's, you know what? For you, that's what we do. At Ivo. Did you he get that, that for you, two books? Uh, uh, he's Andrew. He's, a, he's Andrew. It's all good. He's been money on us all night. He's and a friend of ours. He's a friend of ours. He, he's a friend of ours. And. Also, you know your brother hated Maestro? And he hated Oppenheimer. Yeah, but he really hated Maestro. You know what he thought? He was one of those guys that thought that Maestro was an Oscar grab. Oh, not, uh, yeah, a lot of people thought that. I didn't think that. I don't understand why you would go and make this obscure film about this guy who is obscure to modern people. You know, he's uh -huh. not the, the 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 guy. The one thing I've had, but the problem I have with that film is that they didn't uh, demonstrate enough of of what an incredible uh, 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 contributor he was to popular music. That's right. Music. We went over this. Let's yeah, see, yeah, yeah. Let's, That's let's, my only problem with that film. Say, what's man or woman? Who, who benefits more in marriage, man or woman? I think there's no benefit for a man, unfortunately, in the Western way of marriage. I think it's so sickening that, you know, we have this agreement that women, when they divorce a man, they can just leave with a lot of his money or expect alimony for the rest of their life. And one of the things I always ask women is, are you going to have sex with him after you divorce for the rest of your life? And she's like, why would I do that? I was like, then why do you expect payment for the rest of your life? Okay. Wow. Okay. Wow. Wow. All right. Wow. I would tear that woman apart like warm. Jesus red. Christ. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have fangs here. I'm, this is how I'm built. That is the most stunning creature. And as she speaks and delivers perfect logic, I'm like, oh, that's why I'm fucked. I can't. I have ridiculous standards. I put it on my fucking Instagram recently. Um, fucking Aida Garifuliana, fucking singing opera. This is my problem. I, my standards are stupid. I was asked recently about a date, like, why don't you go on dating sites? I'm like, I can't do that shit. I can't partake. I can't partake in the dating sites. What a horrific thing that is for the kids now, that they are just swiping past just photographs. They're just going like this. It's awful. Yeah. Also, you know, there's another thing that occurred to me about that stuff, right? A couple of things. One is these dating sites, they're not set up for you to really meet someone because no. that ends the service that you don't subscribe anymore. No, you're they're, doomed. They're, you're they're set up objective. to fail. Yeah, their objective is to keep you dating so you stay on the site. So there has to be shit in their algorithm that, that sets you up to fuck up, to fail. So that's not cool, right? Second of all, I hate that meat market feel of it. But there's Ugh. another thing I don't next, like. Next, 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 next. There's next. another thing I don't like. I don't. I wouldn't like to put a woman in that position where you like, you turn her down. You know what I mean? Like you go on a date or you meet her for a drink and then you don't call her back, and and that's horribly demeaning for a woman that she's thinking like, oh, he didn't call me back or did he like me or did I say something stupid or. I don't want to put women in that position no. because I'll, I will happily go out for drinks and a date and so on, but then not, you know, I'll be like, oh, yeah, I'll see you then soon Bye, and go home. But that's just going to put her in that horrible. I don't want to put people in that position. I just don't want to partake in it. Mm. You hear what I'm saying? I do. Travis Watts says, I married before the online. You know what? I, that, met, yeah. I met Paul in a bar. 35 years ago almost it'd be 35 years ago this year and uh we had a brief conversation uh made out in the car and that was the end of it and uh you know that, that was the end of it like there was none of this shit like auditioning while the going was good man yeah i was like okay yeah, hey, i had kids while the going was good so i'm not complaining either yeah yeah, I have yeah. No, compl I have no complaints yeah. Who cares? Who cares? I have no Who complaints. Cares? Who 
cares? The only thing I was worried about is that he might have a small penis. I was like, fuck. Well, you, well, you found out. <laughs> Sorry, I don't get, I want to get. I was like, we fuck. All know, I, hope, I, I hope this guy doesn't have a small penis, and he did not. <laughs> Italiano. 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 I was like, the one t- it's a deal breaker, ladies. It's a deal breaker. I was like, oh shit. Like, I love everything about this guy. He's smart. He's funny. He's really cute. He's airy. He's got all the shit I like. I was like, if this guy's going to have a really small penis, it's going to suck. And I was like, oh well. You're like, okay, keep her. <laughs> okay. Put a ring on it. Put a Put ring, a ring on it. If you like it, <laughs> ring on it. Well, you got in while the going was good, man. I've never been in that position, but I can imagine how shitty that must be. That, My God. I mean, it's, it's this grinder and Tinder and all of that shit. It's so it's superficial and disaster. shit. Because everybody's got to say, you know, 36, uh, 5, 11 and a half. You know, you, you know what 165, feels, 9 and a half. You gotta but you know what it feels like to there. me, especially at my age, it feels like... You're going into, you know, where there was a sale on and your hours late and all the shit that was left over is there. It's like the moon swatch, the sun, mission to the sun is left. That's all. That's on, all. Anyway. It's just a fuck, fuck load of those on the shelf. Sure. Like all the good stuff is gone. You're mm. going to meet fucking, what are you going to be on Tinder? You're going to meet the love of your life. You're going to meet Sadia. You're going to meet some great genius of a woman, a magnificent creature. No. You know, and you're now you're on that shelf too. So now, I can my really sister <laughs> James Murray. <laughs> What's that mean? I don't get that. She's fucking just. She's like, shut up. <laughs> Whatever. Sorry, Carrie. It's oh, after hours. It's Selena says it's after hours. It's after it's hours. A- Who, cares? Who cares? I mean, you know. Listen, at the end of the day. Uh, you don't want your long-term partner to be uh, bereft in a particular area, right? You wouldn't, unless they're rich. Hey, listen, people weigh things out in different ways. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, you could be bad in certain ways, but you could be good in other ways and so on. Well, and, I mean, like, know. that's a deal breaker, ladies, though. Come on. It is. Mm. It isn't for late. A lot of ladies are, are kind of cool with that. I don't know. That's a that's a thirty rock quote. Deal breaker, ladies. It's a deal breaker. I mean, you know, I didn't marry for money. That's for sure. That's for sure. I, ma- I did marry for love, and that's a great thing. You I know, remember having it- arguments with. Uh, I mean, numerous, numerous exes. How many fucking arguments have I had? I could write a book of arguments. The book of arguments. There you go. I'm going to write a book of arguments. And you know, you get to certain. Oh well. Oh, you you're like this and you're like that. And I'm like, okay. When was the last time I made you come? This morning. Okay. Well, would you rather I wasn't able to do that and I was the other thing, like I washed the dishes or whatever the fuck complaint you have? No. Well, then stop complaining. Like there are things that carry bigger currency. Yeah, I mean, it's, some things carry huge currency. It doesn't mean you get to be an asshole, but some things have larger currency than others. They do. They do. You bring certain shit As to the As Carolyn team. Martin says, now I can't wait to meet Paul. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Paul. <laughs> but, you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> You're not going to get in trouble there, are you? He won't watch I'm this so, anyway. I'm in so much trouble. It's three hours, 20 minutes in. He's not going to watch any of this. <laughs> No, he doesn't watch any of these shows. Okay, great. So we're he fucking miles watch any of them. You, you, like, you know, loose lips sink hey, shit. Jesus, you know? at least it's not the other way around. You're bad yeah. mouthing him. Yeah, well, come Meanwhile, on. Meanwhile, Carolyn Martin should shut up because her husband is gorgeous. He's a big strapping ride of a man. I mean, I I, I saw a picture of him. I was like, holy you shit. You know, Bo- not only Buckley, that, he's got gigantic hands and beautiful yeah, Bo- wrists. Buckley, just speaking of his hands, Buckley is a guy on one on Tinstream. And Buckley met him, and he said he shook his hand. Buckley's a big, you know, he's not tall, but he's a fucking built fella. Buckley's got the same wrist as me, right? Yeah. And, and Buckley said when he shook uh, Carolyn's man's hand, he goes, that was a fucking bear paw. 
Oh like, my god, you wouldn't believe the fucking paws on that guy. <laughs> he was like, she I would showed me pictures of the watches this. were dwarfed on him. Yeah, he's a bear. He's a he's, he's a, a proper bear. man. Proper man. Unless you feel like like you might suffocate under his weight, <laughs> which doesn't suck either. By the way, <laughs> that's okay too. You know, listen, all that stuff's for the kids, you know, because as you get older, it's about what's on TV and what did you make for dinner? <laughs> right. Because that's what becomes important. Shared shit. Oh, my God. Did you enjoy Istanbul? I did. What about you? <laughs> right. You know, travel becomes important and hotels become important. And I think it was food. Chris Rock. Chris Rock, the comedian, said years ago, like, you got to be able to fucking eat a meal with the person. And watch a movie with the person, sure. And fall asleep next to the person without any shit, and then you know you've got something solid. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. It's true. I mean, listen, I spend my every day with Paul, and he makes me laugh. He makes me laugh. <laughs> yeah, Paul's a funny guy. He's a very funny guy, and he's smart, and he's you know he's he's an interesting person. He's not. Uh, but you yeah. can't watch movie. You can't watch movies with him, especially. Oh my god, he's like. He can I just he's say like, this? He's the black guy in the movie theater. He just yells at the movie screen. He just does it. I'm so sorry. glad this is miles into the stream. I'm sorry, but it's true. You ever go? Oh, you did! Oh, don't go in that room! Oh, child! Stay. No, don't open that door! Are you crazy? He, go there. he doesn't. He's not like that. Is he, he does all that shit. And like oh, he no. he debunks everything. He'll be like, I know he's first, a debunker. I know he's a debunker. Like, fuck me. How, how, how do they get out of the spaceship? That's not yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Stop I know he's like that. Yeah. By the well, way, he can't can can fuck around with Star Trek Enterprise, which is my favorite show because it's like it's so well thought out. But like, I'll be trying out a new show and be like, this is not for you because this, 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 and this. And I'm like, right, fuck, this show sucks. It just debunked <laughs> the shit. He ruins it for me. So one, one came up recently about doing two. This brilliant comedian, comedian that I follow on uh, on Instagram. And she's like, oh, so I watched you too. It was really good. And so on. So you know the premise, right? They tame the worm or they get on the worm, the huge. Dude, I read all that Frank Herbert shit. Right, right, right. So she's like, you know, it was really good. But I just got one question. How do they get off the worm? You have the sandworms. <laughs> How did they get off the worm? <laughs> and that was her post. I was like, oh, fuck. He just fucked the movie for me now because I haven't seen it yet. But now I've I'm never seen the first it. one. Because <laughs> How did the they get off the worm? <laughs> Was the first well, we one know how great? they got on it, but how we did do. they get off it? Was is it worth watching? Dune one, I loved. Yeah, you loved it. Okay, is so, that that Denis Villeneuve, right? Yeah, and he did the Denis Villeneuve. He did Villeneuve. the second one also. Okay. It's his thing now. Um, listen, the first one. It's okay. Is it amazing? turn all the lights off? Sit in front of your beautiful television. Turn the sound up. And just mm -hmm. immerse because that's it's like Lawrence of Arabia. It's slow as fuck. Mm -hmm. It's you know, it's it's about atmosphere and it's, it's going into another universe. That's what it is. Okay. Apparently, too, I haven't seen two, but apparently it now it picks up. And I'm, I'm sure he's gonna do three or whatever, because it's it's massive. But uh oh man, and that soundtrack, whoa, the Hans Zimmer shit, whoa, it's huge. Is it Hans Zimmer? It's Hans Zimmer at his largest. Like, this dwarfs his other soundtracks. And he, I love his soundtracks. Man, oh, man. This is like, you can't believe the scale of what you're hearing. It's, I'm not, you're thinking to yourself, did they record this in a, in 40,000 airplane hangers? Like, how enormous is this? Hans Zimmer's a crazy cunt, though. That yeah. guy, he, like, does everything. He does the arrangements in Logic Pro and, like, GarageBand. Oh, you, know he he he... you know what he works in? He works in Cubase. Cubase. We're getting super nerdy. Sorry, guys. Nerdy. This, he works in Cubase. In Steinberg. Steinberg. I don't know where Cubase is now, version 30. I don't know. I that used to have the Cubase. first. I used to have Cubase. I mean, Notator and Cubase were the first. Did we're talking about the 
before there was uh, digital, there was, you know, you recorded things on analog tape. But when digital came along, the first two things out there, programs were Steinberg, Cubase, and uh, a thing called Notator, which later became Logic, which I, and we all use. Uh, but Steinberg, it's funny because it didn't capture much of the market share, even though it was first. It was way, way, way before Pro Tools. Which yeah, everybody knows that term, Pro Tools, because it's now a, an adjective, right? Pro Tools. Yeah, to Pro Tools things is a bit like, yeah, yeah, sure. It's sure. like, have you Pro Tools that? I didn't mean. I didn't. Tools sorry, anybody watching, I didn't mean to go down a rabbit hole with this. I just. That's okay. That's yeah, okay. Uses Cubase, went. which is very, which is very peculiar, but it kind of doesn't matter because all you need to know is what you know and do it well and use it well. Like I'm using Final Cut to make those videos, yeah. and any professional editor might go. You're not using Premiere. You're not using DaVinci. Wait a second. There's no way that DaVinci Resolve, Resolve. is considered more a lot of high people tech. Can Resolve, but but the big one is Avid, right? Well, sure. It's always so been. so. I'm using Final Cut Pro, and it's working. So fuck it. You just use whatever you use. By the way, yesterday I spent sixteen exactly sixteen hours. Trying to build a scene where Grace appears at the end of part two. I'm saying this because I'm we're three hours and a, three and a half hours in. <laughs> um, I'm trying to make Grace appear because, of course, I get to the end of Clare Island where her her watch out was, where she was watching for fucking Napoleon coming because that was her big fear was Napoleon taking over Ireland. But little did she know that the real threat was f coming from the opposite side. And uh, I get to, I go out on the far end of Clare Island and there's no one. And there's just sheep looking at me going, are you for real? Like, do you know where you are? Like, do you have You're in the jungle, home? baby. You're in the jungle, baby, now. <laughs> and I get to this most remote place on earth and you see this fucking castle this watchtower from the hill and i kind of give up and i kind of go well you know i don't know what i was expecting she's been dead for 500 years and i turn around and go home but then it goes then the weird music comes in and crazy scenes come in and then she appears and i've been wow. working on that fucking shit man i wish i had industrial light and magic i wish i had like millions of <laughs> of uh budget to just like have these guys like create the scene you don't but, need that because benzo says one dollar 99 love the pale well, Wait till like, beyond the pale mother beyond the pale is gonna blow your mind dude because it shit gets crazy and beyond the pale let's give you a mini super chat thank you benzo yeah, because uh, I was sitting here with his brother because his brother was in town doing some uh, St. Patrick's revelry. And uh, we had a couple of drinks and some food. And we just sat down and watched it. And like it was like, oh, shit, this is an hour and 30, blah, blah, blah. Oh, shit. It was over in seconds. Oh, really? Oh, good. It That's was over good. in seconds. And he goes to me, because what would you think? I was like, how the fuck did one guy do that? Like, you know, when you watch a movie, and I said this on my show, so I'm not trying to blow smoke up your ass. You know, yeah, it's okay. It's you okay. know, I love you and all that. Shit. Yeah, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Who cares? Um, who cares? Who cares? <laughs> so, like, when you watch the end of, guys, when you watch the end of a movie, you see Industrial Light and Magic, blah, blah, blah. And you see a little list of names and all the shit that goes down and all the stuff and all the stuff. When you watch that, is one name. He's the director. He's the the cinematographer. He's the writer. Every single element of that thing, other than like travel and catering and all that shit. You know, like luckily we have amazing, great people who support our art and, uh, and like contribute. But like the creative angle of that whole thing, the Ireland part one, 100%, all of it was done by him. Nobody shot any of the video. You know, it was really funny. My friend was like, oh, my God, all the stock footage. How the hell did they put that together? I'm like, 
There's there was no, no stock, stock footage. There's no stock footage. It's like everything he shot, everything in that video was shot by him. She's like, what about the, the matches? I'm like, he went and shot it. The what? It was all the, the, the sports shots. Oh, I shot a, the, 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 all the TV stuff. I didn't go to the game over. No, I didn't shoot the game, but I shot the people in the bar watching the game. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Said, all of that was done by him. He's like, She's like, well, there was no crew. I'm like, no, there's crew. no crew. He's no crew. There's no crew. Yeah, it was crazy. In fact, it was it was said by a couple of people while we were, like, they were there. They were going, God, it's weird because because I'll just go like this with the camera or just grab it and I'll just keep the conversation going. Some people they're all obsessed on their camera. You know, they you can't keep them off their camera. With me, you're like. Where's the camera? Oh, it's over there. I don't give a shit. I just dump it. I'll throw it on the bar and I'll throw another one on the bar and then we'll have a chat and drinks and so on. And they don't know. They don't know. It's the whole thing's being fil- filmed by a couple of angles. Mm. Um. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Fuck. I, I don't know. I'd love a crew. Stock footage great. makes me want to vomit because now I see it. Because many years ago when I like, uh, I, I I was chosen as the guy to make videos for my stupid band. They I used some stock footage, and then right after I did it, I was so um, I was so mad at myself for doing it because now I see it all. Whenever I watch a video, I see like the doctor with the clipboard, or like the guy throwing the football. I like I see it all now. I'm like that is so shitty. And like when you see original content, you're like knocked out, and it's pretty amazing. Travis Watts says ten fucking U.S. dollars. Ireland Part One was amazing, machine. Thank you for sharing your art with us. Can't wait for Part Two, yeah. motherfucker. You know what you get for that? <laughs> I'm gonna give <laughs> you the. Mega- <laughs> because he deserves it. Because I was knocked out by it. I've, listen, I've watched all this guy's stuff and heard all his records and stuff. This was an achievement. It was pretty amazing. It really was. Yeah, now what I have to do is to, part two has to up the ante a bit. But part two is going to go into, like, you know, the bit where you go, where, you know, I'm fucking just meeting people on the street, you know, and getting spotted at the watch gathering and stuff. And then it goes to the guy with the spoons. He's just playing the spoons. Yeah, yeah, amazing. And then it goes to the clouds. I'm like, there's fucking something weird happening because the clouds are going overhead and it's getting crazy. Um, then the spoons get louder and they get all reverb. Like, cause there's, there's, am I, am I seeing things? Like, is, is, this, is anyone else noticing this or is it just me? So it brings it into a little bit of mystical. You know, there's a bit of mystery going on, a bit of superstition going on, which I think, you know, tantalizes the senses a bit. Like, oh, you agreed. Know, you know, so the clouds, uh, just to give you a spoiler, because we're fucking miles into the stream and nobody's listening anymore. No, I'm kidding. Uh, the clouds are dragging me out. Darren west, Kelly is. And then they stop. They stop in the west. So they get to the west and they stop. So they're just like they were pushing me, you know. And then sure. I find I find my way out out there, and then and then they stop. So it's you know it's kind of it's got a bit of spirituality going on, mm. a bit of the old Ireland shit going on, like the bit when you when, when I go to the museum, uh, the National Museum, and you see all the Ohm stuff, and then you see the bog bodies and all that stuff, you know. Amazing, so those, you know, and and then the tar brooch, and then it shows the clouds, and everything's in fast forward, and it's like there's a voice. Yeah, it's great to catch up with old friends and go to pubs, and yeah, but there's a voice going on. There's something spiritual happening in the background. I'm getting pulled, you know, and that's that's nice. That adds a bit of, you know, electricity to it. I think. Kiran, ten bucks. Do do you rem? What well, remember the remember. old man? Uh, yes, I I do. Yeah, I have that footage of the old man crossing the road, and my, he might be included in there. I've yet to get to that part. Uh, Kiran. Thank you, 
Kieran's for that. Yeah, Vince. Carolyn Martin's fifty bucks. Clouds will never, never be the same. <laughs> oh, Jesus! I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you. Nothing says super chat like Mahler. Yeah, the Mahler. You love the Mahler now. <laughs> Two dozen. How could you not? <laughs> It's so majestic. It's insane. It's some of the biggest shit that's ever been invented. I love Mahler. Gustav, yeah, I love you. Do you have five minutes left in you, man? I want to show you. I do. I do indeed. Yeah. Um, there's some weird stuff here. I loved this angle. Yeah, all, all the driving with the. Yeah. But you're so like, the... what's up with the clouds? Yeah, right. So the the traditional music ends in the same uh, the same tonic. Feel so Jewish. <laughs> okay, the tonic. Uh... Oh yeah. And that's where the music comes in, the exact same tonic. And later in the video, I talk about going out to the old Ireland. Uh, that's where I've got to go. And that's when they wear the Royal Oak, because the Royal Oak is the, is the watch for the second part. The first part was the gold sub, right? The sure. blue. But I wear the, I wear the watch I'm wearing right now, the Royal Oak and green, okay. So that's well, the that old serious. Ireland. Now watch what happens. <laughs> Fucking, this is one of the Easter eggs in there. I'm just trying to plant shit all over the place because all the all the crowd are gonna spot the Easter eggs. So watch this. I'm going to the Ar old Ireland to wear the Royal Oak. Look. <laughs> <laughs> so these are, this is like little shit that I'll throw around. But when you town, see the clouds, uh, no sun. where do the clouds come in at first? It's back here. Uh, yeah, it's here. While I'm trying to have fun here and rediscover Dublin, seeing overhead. Now, some of these cloud shots are that's real. That's not, real time. That's not sped up, right? Fast. But you'll see some, some of the stuff I speed up just for dramatic effect. That's a little sped up. That's not sped up at all. Those clouds are just going by like that. No, fucking no, weird, right? That really so wasn't fair. sped up? It's not sped up at all. You see the people on the street. Yes, now, right. this is sped up. Now, what I did here, everyone on the street and the cars are in slow motion, but the sky is is sped up. Real. Okay, so what I did, dude, I drew a mask around all these chimneys and all these edges everything i went in i zoomed in on everything and i drew a tight mask it took me fucking forever to draw all around there and separate the lower end of the image from the upper from the sky yeah and that and that way you get and it's only it a second so of fucking time. video which is frustrating that's like some but ilm shit. He seems to notice or care it's just separating the two so that's regular. I didn't draw any masks there. That's actually the fucking that's sky. So real. But look at that. That's everyone's slow mo down bottom, and then the sky is going fast. And the same is in that, this one. What did you do? You drew the mask, and then you were able to change the speed of the clouds. Yeah. So the mask separates the two levels, so I can manipulate one image which is moving too fast. So in this case, uh, where is it gone? This case, uh, play it again. Yes, it's not real. In this case, the people would be all sp like walking really fast, and the cars would be going too fast, which would be the giveaway. But instead, when you separate them, you get the lower half of the image you can manipulate, and that's going too slow. So if you could see the clouds on that layer, they'd be going too slow. So you separate them, and now you get the fast clouds with the slow moving people you see maybe i'm being summoned same there and you right. do it and you group those layers and then you you do a zoom on them 
And that's how you get that effect going on. Comes back in later after I'm there with uh, Neve and Mima <laughs> and the countryside. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Yes, Mima. <laughs> hey, with the mom, the sister. I and love the, how you got Jer's giggle in there. Nicely. Because <laughs> her giggle is, is life itself. Yeah, it's great. It's amazing. And then you get this fucking creepy shit happening no, again. She's Look. watching me. <clears throat> yes, Grace. I'll come see you soon. I promise. So that, that was the whole idea, like that, that there's a spooky thing going on in the background sure. the whole time. Um, and then when when I finally get out, I left the link here, right? I'm not sure if you saw this, the preview for part two. Oh, yeah. What are you, yeah, crazy? Right. Okay, I didn't know if you made it. Yeah, we made it. Okay. Who's with your brother? There's a sheen the horse. A sheen the horse. <laughs> but then the clown this is where he lives. They come out. They're, they're moving, and you see what you see finally is you see where the clouds have been dragging me. Yeah. So the cloud you see below here, you see the racing clouds from from the east from Dublin, bringing like ushering me in over to the west you see because they're racing and then these superior older clouds is this natural or did you manipulate is that's natural clear now where the clouds were that's fucking not dragging me to dude those are the clouds of my childhood i lived right. with those and i'm like and then they stop that's look, what they, they should stop. look like see so it's got to get spiritual and then that's and true. finally then this last shot here this is from Clare Island. That's like, that's a place. That's a real place. Grace, I'm here. Huh. That's, you know, that's what you want. That's what you want. You want the little, uh, yeah. Did you go to Newgrange? Oh, man, I bought the ticket and everything. I did not. It's one yeah. of my regrets. I mean, there's a lot to cover there. There's a yeah. lot. Uh, Sean L, $9.99, told to Sheen Instagram his movie was outstanding because it is. Uh, right. He's a bit of a bang there. Look at that handsome guy. Just yeah, told it was boy. more so. I have ancestral roots from Kark. So I can't wait for part two. Sancha to both of you and Laverne's memory. Thank you so freaking very much. Great, man. Let's give you the mega. Thank you, Sean L. I didn't get to Cork, man, but. Uh... It's okay. Yeah. There's, you could do a whole cork thing. Andrew, again, 10 Canadian. Anyone who hasn't as yet, he's the ultimate cheerleader for uh, Sheena Malley, Dirk Kennedy, and the Eyebashers. Take a moment to upvote and subscribe. Quality company like sharing an evening with friends called Bastards is priceless. Tiz, tiz. And for you, a little bit of Lenny and the coolie, my friend, because you deserve it. Thank you so much. For nice. Me. Amazing, amazing stuff. This was quite a night. We're like three hours, almost four hours into this. This show, yeah. we should probably call it quits. We got 124 in the room. Oh, look at this! Who just came in? Nathaniel Hannon, finally home in Atlanta. He started streaming three hours ago. We did Nathaniel. three hours forty. Three hours forty. <laughs> I like giving out the big Leonard Bernsteins tonight, especially to people <laughs> like Nathaniel and Andrew and all the gang that are here. Vaughn says, weird up drive, up vote, amazing shot. Michaela just shut you on. You're teaching me Final Cut Pro. Listen, that's easy. You'll learn that in a second. Thank yeah. you all so much. What do you think, Ashina? I think we should call it a quits. Oh, it's it's sure. been a long night. You've it's been on night. for you've been on for two hours before you got to, to this. Yeah, it's man. You joined me at seven o'clock. It's almost three hours later. Yeah, man. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for Friday night. It's the big show. Thank you for this week. Thank you for being uh, incredible to me and the bashers and 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 being there for me and the girl 
and for supporting the channel and being here every single day for dark weekdays and for coming on for classic bashers with the sheen o'malley and myself and we'll be back with you on mondays with the beautiful michaela de chatillon yeah, yeah. for watch fashion police and of course i'll be back on um on tuesdays for you know dirk dirk weekdays but also remember that Oshin O'Malley's got his brand new uh, Ireland video out there, part one. Please, everybody, go over to the Oshin O'Malley channel and watch that video. And also get ready for part two, which is going to be the West, which, of course, the West is the best, as we all know, especially coming from a culture like myself. So I appreciate it so much. And thanks, everybody. And thanks, Oshin. Thanks for a really fun night. You are. Great show. So remember to hold the door open, which I did today at the post office. Remember to say please and thank you. Remember to hold and hug the person you love. And don't forget to tell them how much you love them. And don't forget, whatever you do, don't be a dick. Unless, of course, that person is a total cunt. <laughs>